Yeah, they, 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 they hate when you elevate. They second up losses, I'm handing them out. Yeah, I had to go delegate. It feel like I'm floating, I'm lost in the moment. I swear I could levitate. You started out selling cars, right? Yeah, when I was a kid. Yeah. It's my way out. I hate car salespeople. Dude, I fucking I hate hated. Them. I hated everything, God but I'm going to tell you this. Oh, it's going to be viral. Yeah, but but we'll we'll rip it. But anyways, yeah. but that was uh, that was where that was where I started making money. You know, I got in sales. We should start the podcast. We're gonna start all this shit. Yeah. Oh, it's rolling. Okay, good. Okay, good. Yeah. So, you got me saying I hate car sales people. Yeah, but no, that's good. I hate hey, them, bro. I, well, ninety nine percent of the people in this world like they hate car sales. And by the way, you might be a good salesperson. Maybe. A, yeah. Well, I'm gonna tell you something. We fucking hate car salesmen. Yeah. I mean, dude, I can't, baby, how many times we try to buy a car and we can't fucking buy a car? Dude, I was in a, I was in a place and my wife trying to, I tried to, I bought her a Ferrari for Mother's Day. We're trying to buy one and we can't even buy one. What do you mean? Like, you can't buy one. Just can't buy one, baby. I was like, hey, I was like, if, if this one's available, we'll take it. He's like, well, it looks like there's a sold sign on it. I'm not really sure if it's sold or not. Let me just get your number and I'll call you like, <laughs> and I'm like, well, if it's available, we'll, we'll just buy it right now. Like, we'll take it. Remember that? And she's like, and Jackie's like, I'll, I'll take it. And he's like, well, I'll call you. <laughs> and I'm like, fuck it. I get off. We call Brad Lee, right? And, uh, you know, Brad, Brad Lee. Yeah, Brad Last Lee. Last name is Lee. Yeah. Like, okay. uh, he's the guy, uh, he's the influencer in, uh, in Vegas. He's like okay. a really good friend. Okay. He owns Lightspeed. He's, uh, but anyways, but his name is Brad Lee, L-E-A. And then he, yeah, yeah. And he just said, hey, dude, like, I got a guy that's got one of these. And, you know, we what just called it? him. What kind of car was it? It was, I bought her an F8 Ferrari uh, convertible, Spider, uh, a new one. Oh, and maybe in that, maybe that category of cars, they were like, well, I'm trying to sell this to someone else who said they wanted it kind of thing. No, it, it's just that people don't fucking care anymore, bro. It's like they don't, you know why you hate car salesmen? Honestly, it's just because they don't fucking care. And they don't, no, I'll tell you why I hate car salesmen because they follow you around and like just let me look at the fucking cars and get out of my face. Well, here's what I will tell you the truth of it is, is that when I was 18 years old, and I mean, like, I I had never held more than five dollars in my hand in my whole life, dude. It sounds like this guy's telling the story of the rock right now. Yeah, no, I'm, play, I'm playing with you. I'm playing. No, but like, I mean, $5. Like, like I was fucking broke. And, and, and I just remember well, my pop pop used to send me five bucks for like uh, each holiday. So that was the only time we ever had money. Yeah. And my dad never gave us any money. And my mom was a fucking crackhead. So the first day on the car lot, it was, sim it was simple. Like you walked out, you shook someone's hand, you know, like we were the horse's mouth. We told everybody there was brochures. There wasn't the internet. It's 1999. Yeah. And uh, dude, like we made money. I made 1700 bucks my first day. And the selling stuff back happened. then was a hundred thousand times, million times more impressive than selling things now. Yeah. Like it's 10, 10,000 times easier now. Yeah. Cause of the fucking internet. Totally. Yeah. But, yeah. but back then though, when I did that, I was like, dude, this is my way out. So then I just, I made at 18, I made like a hundred two and at 19, I made like two twenty five, And then by the time I was 20, I made like 500 grand selling cars. And I was just like, this is my way out. Like I'm going to do Prior to selling cars, did you sell anything or what were no, you doing? No, man, I was a loser, dude. I was in high school. I mean, I was in junior high. I mean, I did drugs, partied, ran around, chased chicks, raised on the street, parents never home. I was basically raised by kids. Jerry Springer show. Yeah. Um, but the cool thing about it is, is for real, like at 39, I changed my life. And really anything before 39 was I made, I made money, but it all fell through my fingers and I was a piece of shit. And I never changed anybody's life. Why did it fall through your fingers? Just because I, I wasn't a good person. I mean, honestly, like my intentions weren't good. I had commission breath. That deal, like I hate salespeople. Dude, you got to realize you're only going to be as good as your leader. So if I ran with you and you're a badass, I'm going to be a badass. But if I run with this other guy over here, that's like, fuck it. We just got to make money. Then like, I'm just going to want to make money. I feel like most people, that's all they think about nowadays, making money. That's why we're winning, man. I mean, like, dude, I swear on my life, like, when I got into this entrepreneur space, like my intentions change and we just wanted to build a business. We didn't try to become like influencers. We need to generate some leads. And uh, so I got on social media trying to generate leads, like talking about like, you know, what we do, you know, and shit like that. And um, we started talking about working out and, you know, like everybody's like, I wouldn't do that if I was you, you know, cause you can't mix, you know, like self-development, working out, teaching, dude, I, me and her would do events and people would come out and before they would, we would train them with like education and teaching and selling and how to communicate and closing. We would make them work out. We'd make everybody throw up everywhere. We would like break the weakness out of them. And they're like, dude, you guys are gonna go out of business. You're gonna get Do you sued. think there's another way to do that? Well, I think a lot of people are really weak right now. And I think yeah. that the mental part of like the world is missing. So I think that's why they're all weak in business. Why do you think it's that way? Because of the internet? I, I just think, think a, because there's a bunch of like weak people. I mean, why? physical, like mental business. Like, why though? 
I think people's identities are just lost because they don't take care of themselves. I think it's also because the internet. Oh yeah, no, no, the internet's true. I don't have social media in my phone. If you look at my phone, like I run social media, like we get a hundred million views every 30 days on social media, but I don't have it on my phone because it's the greatest drug ever. The, the, the dopamine of like, oh, I have this, I got this. Yeah, dude, like even, yeah. even me, like when I deleted it off my phone, I found myself looking back at my phone and I was like, dude, it's gone. So what do you, what I do you, got really productive. I mean, where do you start in all this? Cause obviously you don't start just making a bunch of money and being really well at sales. Like mm -hmm. where do you, where did you start? Well, so in 2019, me and my wife, Jacqueline, right. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you like the, the point where this guy, like the Elliot group started Elliot, where a movement started was I was a, I was a general manager of a car dealership, man. First of all, almost went to jail hanging around the wrong people, all kinds of shit fucking in my life. Jackie kept telling me, like, don't hang out with those people. And then I would think she was nagging me. And, like, she would see that, like, I'm a product of my environment, right? Like, yeah. if I'm around bad people, I'm going to be a bad person. I'm, I have a very addictive personality, so I have an itch. So if I'm around, like, winners, I got an itch to, like, change everybody's life. If I'm around losers, I got an itch to, like, let's drink the most. Let's, let's be the craziest, you know, let's do this. So it's like, she was always like, you need to be around good people. You need a good, I had the right girl, but I needed, the, I needed the right men around me in my life. And I the didn't right have environment, that. Yeah. yeah. So uh, anyways, I started watching uh, on um, the internet. I started watching Tony Robbins, you know, Andy Frazella. I started watching some of these guys. I never got on the internet before. I didn't ever, even had social media. 2019, um, I quit a two and a half million dollar job, which I was a general manager and I hated myself. Dude, I had, I had a little love handles. Being a GM for, uh, for what? Like, like a general manager of a car dealership. Where? Um, in Oklahoma. Okay. I lived in Oklahoma. Dude, check this out. I mean, this is five years ago, Bradley. This is five. I mean, so you talk about change. Like, people can change really fast. Yeah. But my identity was that I was a car salesman. My identity that success was my wife having a purse full of cash, paid off house, nice cars. Dude, I wasn't a good kid. I wasn't a good dad to my son. I mean, I didn't cheat on my wife, but I just wasn't, I wasn't never there. Even though I was at home, I wasn't present. I was still at work, right? Yeah, I know I'm that just, life. Yeah, like, yeah. I was just fucking, but I was burned out, too. I looked in the mirror, and honestly, dude... Listen, I was out of shape. I'm in shape right now. I was really out of shape. Then I was fat, had fucking hair. I was a totally different person, dude. And I mean this. Like, you can go back on the internet to search Andy Elliott YouTube when I first started making my videos 2019, dude, and look up the old me, and you're going to be like, motherfucker. Dude, you'd be like, get the fuck out of here. But that's how everybody, a lot of people are that way right now. And Jackie, see, I love her because she knows how to trigger the shit out of me. She's my best friend, but she knows how to get me going. And she reached over and grabbed my love handle and just fucking grabbed it, <laughs> right? And this is why you see me fucking with people all the time because I'm trying yeah. to piss people off. And she's like, you're getting comfortable. And dude, when she did that, like it's like spiders crawling up my spine. And I went in the garage, worked out for like four hours. Like that was going to fix everything, shaved my fucking head. And dude, I just went to war. The hair was slowing you down. But dude, I just wanted to look in the mirror and see a the different hair, motherfucker. Fuck. You know I don't have a problem you, with the hair, so I'm fast. Yeah, yeah, but you just want to see like a different dude. But dude, I just shaved my head. And what I did is I just went like, I like totally recreated. And when you say like, what does that mean? Like my identity changed. I wasn't going to lie anymore. I wasn't going to be a piece of shit. I didn't want to, I didn't want to see my family that didn't believe in me no more. I didn't want to see my friends. I just But you were doing so well, like to make a million dollars or two, whatever it is. It's like, why, why did that have to change then? Dude, I just fucking hated me. Like, I don't know, like if you've ever been to a point in your life where like no one's around, but you just look in the mirror and you're like, I don't fucking like me. Like, I don't, I'm not necessarily not like me. Definitely yeah. not like as happy as I could be. Yeah. But you know, me though, I was like, I don't like me. What about like, yourself? It was the hair, right? The hair was fucking Yeah. The hair off. fucking yeah. pissed me off. Right. Um, Fuck those, number that two, shit. um, seriously, I, I swear to God, my whole life, I had everybody bet against me. Right. You know, like, like Dana White says, like, may God have mercy on my enemies because I won't, like, bet against me that shit. Like, I was always trying to prove everybody wrong. But she always believed in me just to be, like, a badass. My wife was going to have a good life with or without me. I was a project when she found me. I mean, I was 26. She was 24. Nobody fucking believed in me. Everybody thought I was a loose cannon. She was like, no, dude, you're going to be a badass one day. And she rode out with me, and I just made money, but I never really developed outside of making a little bit of money. We were doing better than most. And this is where, honestly, I gave up money. My intentions changed. Um, and I, so I found God, right? And I, I, I'm going to tell you this. I, I wanted to be a preacher. Like, I went from, like, the car salesman guy to, like, dude, I was like, baby, I want to be, like, I'm going to save people's lives. Like, I'm, I was just ready to just, like, my heart was empty, but we were doing okay financially, and I just hated me. 
And so like this big twist just happened where I looked in the mirror and I was like, dude, I'm going to get shredded. I'm going to get ripped for the first time in my life. I'm going to go back to being like, I'm 18 years old. I'm like, dude, like, you know, like I'm going to have sex with my wife every day. It's not going to be a couple times a week now. I'm like, I'm going to be a good dad. I'm going to build a fucking army. We're going to build a team. I'm going to be in the self-development place or but something. What, what made you lean towards that though? Just wa watching like Andy Frazella and like, you know, Ed Milet and like Tony Robbins and, you know, watching guys like you, like in the fitness and watching everybody and watching David Goggins, you know, I just took all these guys and I like. Every, so you use your phone more back then? All the time. Okay. Yeah. And by the way, like I still use it all the time, but to my point now is that I had to get social media off because you're right. The internet does like it, it's, it's, a, it's drugs like yeah. it's it's and once you get in there like it'll take you down a black hole two hours later you look up and you're like fuck i just missed two hours so how do you think then someone who's watching social media now who's engaged with it daily can make it a good thing and not a bad thing i think you got to decide who do you want to be and then you just study those people but if you're just loosely rolling like if i was like dude i want to be like you then i would just check up on you daily see what you're doing and i would just try to model don't you practices. think there's some sort of dead end there though like trying to be like other people well, but like you may like help me build my identity though, you yeah. know, right? Like your discipline, you know, like, you know, like when COVID happened, a lot of people told you like, I wouldn't do that. You need to shut down. You need to do yeah, this. Yeah, that's fucking stupid. Yeah, but, but like you standing up like that. Yeah. Showed a lot of people like I need to fucking stand up. Yeah. Okay. Like, so that little edge, I took that edge and I got that from you. So I'm like, okay, cool. You know what? Fuck you. Yeah. I'm going to go do this shit now. And then, um, so that little piece was good for me. I needed to see that had I not been watching, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have got it. Um, but like, you know, like the, the Andy Frizzella intensity, the, the Tony Robbins state, like the state that he carries in and how long he can run. He's 20 years older than me, Yeah, you know, and, uh, you know, Patrick Bed David is wisdom, right? Like, you know, you've talked to the guy. A lot. I love like, him. Yeah. He's great. Yeah. But you know, his fucking wisdom is insane, man. He's, he's a master sales guy. And yeah, so, but so how do you think you develop that as like a kid or someone watching this versus just, cause I feel like a lot of people look at what's good or what's working and then they just try to mimic it in a, a disgenuine way. Like, it's like, well, I'm going to copy this cause it works, but it's not really from them. Like it's not really in their heart. Yeah. So what I believe is this, is that if I watch you and I see you, let's say your girlfriend's right here. Right. And, uh, you're not married, right? No. Okay. But you have a girlfriend, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's say I sit here and I'm, I'm watching you with your girlfriend and you're really affectionate with her and you're showing her lots of love. I'm like, dude, I like that. And then I just would take that and then I would do that with her. And then I just, I watch shit. Look, take what you want and leave the rest. And so my, my goal is, is that look, everybody's programmed a certain way. If you're watching this, I mean like you're programmed, you're programmed a certain way. You have so many new fucking levels, bro. There's 9 million new levels you can go to. I refuse to believe this is fucking who you're supposed to be. There's like 20 more fucking million levels. Yeah. Uh, same with me and same with all these people watching this. And the only way we're going to get there is to watch someone like Andy Frazella talks about human excellence and raising your standards. We're going to watch someone do something one day, say something one day, keep their word in one way. And we're going to be like, fuck, I want to be like them. So, okay. And you're absolutely right. Take that habit or that identity. But how come so many people see it and they just keep doing the same shit? Like they can't get out of it, even though they hear it, they know it, they want to do it. They do it three times and then they stop. Because they don't want to change yet. Um, you're in shape because you refuse not to fucking be in shape over your dead body. Dude, if it came, you could live, but not be in shape. You probably wouldn't want to live. Yeah. I mean, I've always, I've always felt like if I was like fucking, you know, in some terrible accident, God forbid, please, this never happened. Uh, and I couldn't move. I was like, fuck it. I'm out. I just told her the <laughs> yeah, same thing. I don't want to. I just told her the same fucking thing. Yeah. I swear to God. I just told her, I said, dude, something ever happens to me and I, I can't work out. I said, I want you to take care of me. I swear, I'm not even joking. The reason why I tell you that is because if you want to get a six pack, you'll get one. If you want to make a lot of money, you'll make it. If you want to have a badass marriage, you'll have it. Uh, until someone, Jackie always says, don't wait for something bad to happen before you know you give your best or you change. I, I truly think, man, well, dude, when I was four years old, I got my toe cut off. I took my shoe off, my toe was gone. How right? did you get your toe cut off? Dude, seriously, like it's, it's fucking crazy, but see this right here? <laughs> Yeah, you're getting a really bad rating on Feet Finder right now. Yeah, but you see this? Crazy, yeah. <laughs> Look, but yeah, my you sister- you got four toes there. Four toes. My sister wow. ran me over. That is... Dude, swear to God, I was four years old. She's 10. She ran me over with the lawnmower. But I'm going to tell you a story real quick. How bad that hurt? It fucking hurt. Damn. But, but, but dude, check this out. But when she ran me over, watch this. But I feel it, like that's the most sensitive toe. Yeah, and Fuck. But, but dude, it could have it could have taken off all the deals. And I never talk about this, but I want to explain something real quick. And that's why I say like someone's watching this 
You either wake up now and you change or something's going to happen. You're going to be forced to change. Yeah, that's and, a fact. Yeah. So I was born in 79. It's 1983. My dad is a chain smoker one after the other. Back then, no air conditioner, right? In the car, windows rolled up. My dad's hitting one after the other. I'm in the back. I got asthma. I can't breathe. I got a headache. I'm four years old. And I say, Dad, will you please crack the window? Please crack. This is my kid. Please crack. I mean, I'm out of my kid saying this to me, but like I'm a kid to my, I'm saying, Dad, yeah. crack the window, crack the window, crack the window. And my dad's like, shut your mouth. Like I'm the dad, okay? You're the kid. That's how it was back then. Remember they smoked in airplanes, oh, airports, yeah. everywhere. And dude- that same day, uh, we go out to this field. My sister's 10. She's on a riding lawnmower, and she runs me over on accident. When she ran me over, blood was everywhere. I got five brothers and sisters. We got blood all over us. Um, they don't know if it's the foot, the leg, whatever, because my shoe's still on, but there's blood everywhere, right? Because the top's tied and the bottom's ripped open. Yeah. And my dad takes his shirt off, wraps it around my foot. We race. We're an hour and a half from the uh, hospital because we're in the middle of nowhere. When we get to the hospital, my dad runs into the doctor. I'm literally green because I bled out. Like I'm just, I mean, it's the bottom of my foot, weight. There's a giant gash on the side of my foot. And it's just, I'm just losing all this blood. And he hands me over to the doctor and the doctor goes, there's a good chance your son's going to die today. Because you're bleeding out? Yeah, because I just bled out. Like I was like, I, I was just blood, blood. I was like green. And so, but I remember this though. My dad fell to his knees, starts crying. They hand me over to the doctor. And I'm four years old. I still remember this shit. They take me to the back. Six hours later, surgery. I make it. They put blood in me. They sew my toe up. They deal. My dad walks in after that, after that happened. And he goes, I it's swear to God. <laughs> yeah, he goes, I swear to God, I'll never smoke again. Ever. Uh, okay. Watch. Boom. Never touches a cigarette again. Never smokes again. Problem solved. So some people are watching this right now. And dude, someone's going to die. Something's going to have to happen before they wake up. My main deal is that I just realized that my wife was fucking disappointed in me. And, you know, like, I mean, to me, my wife's been the person that's, there's those people that never believed in you. And there's that one motherfucker that always believed in you. And she did. And I felt like I was letting her down. Dude, honestly, I went fucking psycho. I swear. I mean, I went totally psycho. Like, no podcast bullshit, no hype game. I went psycho. I went dark. You know, any... I don't know how everybody else runs, but I run 50% dark, 50% positive, And I just went all dark for two years. Um, I rebuilt myself. I got in good shape. I learned everything I could. I learned, I was really good at sales and like closing, but I learned to speak. I learned to talk. I learned to think. I learned to control my own thoughts. Me and her got close as fuck. We were ready to, to grow a business. We sold our, we had a million dollar house in Oklahoma. We sold it, went and slept on mattresses on a floor. We fucking gave up everything, bro. As a family, total recreation with my kid, with my daughters, and dude, in 2021, we moved to Scottsdale, Arizona, and we go, we're going to fucking build this army, this thing. And we did. And we went out there, and three years later, um, you know, like day after day after day, posting content all day long, long form YouTube And so what videos. do you mainly sell? Like how to sell? Um, no. So like it started out, automotive was my main niche, right? We had to get in the niche. So Grant Cardone in 2019 was in the automotive space. That, that was his space, right? Because that's where he started before he got into real estate. So our first goal was to take Grant Cardone out. We fucking kicked Grant Cardone's ass right out of the automotive industry. We signed up all his dealers. That was the first thing me and my wife did. After that, and by the way, how did it, you say, well, how'd you do it? Well, I, get, I made free videos on YouTube that were better than his pay training, and I gave them away for free. And then I said, by the way, if you're watching this video... I just taught you how to, how to overcome the objection. I need to think about it. I just taught you how to bump a customer $300 in payment. I just taught you if they said they need to go look at another car, this is what you say. This is how you'll close it. This is how you master a stranger when you don't know someone. This is how you talk to somebody that you've never met and make them fall in love with you. This is how you, I gave all these videos away for free, but then I would say, text me. And then people would text me and they would be like, Andy, I, I did that thing and it made me X amount of money. So basically like the Alex Ramosi deal, like building raging fans, like everybody owed us money I and mean, we didn't ask anybody to spend any money. And then I came out with the dealer training program and overnight we took all the dealers and then we, all the salespeople, I came out with the training course and every one of them bought it because they already made money with the free shit. Yeah. So when I had something, but we ruined the value of money for every, everyone. So automotive was our first niche and then we went solar and then we went general sales all together. And then we went leadership, right? Because the quality of your life always come down to the level of your leadership. So Leadership is everything. Um, and then like building cultures. If you come see my team, like we have a cult. I mean, it's a true cult, like culture of success. <laughs> cult's such a funny word. 
fucking winners. It's such a funny word. It's such a funny way to describe it. Yeah, it's just people so, that all believe in the same beliefs. So when, to win. when, when, like, what's your biggest sale, and what was it of? Um, Do you have those? You mean like now? Yeah, I'm not not in an overall thing. Like one time biggest sale. Well, I mean, I guess it's probably I don't know if it's an automotive space. Yeah, I mean, you know, and like I said, in the automotive space, you know, that was the only job I ever had for 21 years. So I can't compare it to anything else. But what I what I will tell you though is that we um, built this coaching program on recreating people's lives, and like when someone gets with us, like they're never going to be the same again. It doesn't matter. And the art of communication, this whole world lacks. So like you know that people don't look you in the eye anymore. They don't fucking shake your hand. They don't talk to you. You know, like yeah. you want to talk back. It's like, dude, the whole world's fucked up since COVID happened. I mean, like people don't know how to communicate. So we're teaching people how to communicate, how to have an identity, really all the core values and the beliefs that you have. Dude, I'm teaching fucking people to go get jacked, get ripped, get in shape, go take care of their fucking family, get close to God, be loyal. Don't be a fucking piece of shit. Do the right thing. Don't make decisions over money. Dude, we're just like building these armies of people that are all around the country. You know, it's so funny about this whole concept. I, I mean, obviously like sales and sales training is relevant to so many industries, but it's like, it pertains to just life in general. And yeah. it's also interesting to like, I don't know if it's a US based thing, but <clears throat> this is something that I don't understand why this kind of a uh, curriculum isn't in more school. school. Yeah. No one teaches you any of the shit that like, it seems like you can really actually use in your life anymore. It's, it's, yeah, dude, it's all the taught art from of the mastering a stranger like me just walking up and saying, hi, how are you doing? Like right. we walked in your house. I got 10 of my guys. These guys talk to you like they've known you your whole life. Yeah. Nobody's yeah. like, hey, hey, Brad Lee, I'm fucking blah, blah, blah. It's like, what are you talking about? It's like, we're not trying to build rapport. Look, do we love you? We appreciate you. You know, we're glad that you're here. Like, let's go kick some fucking ass. Like, let's, it's no big deal. Like, but why, like, why do you think the world's gotten to this place where I, it's just, I think that cause it, like, obviously it's so needed cause you've seen so much success with how you're doing it. And there's all these other groups of people who do the similar stuff. In a sense, it's like, why, like, not like, why do people need it? Cause obviously I know why people need it, but like, it's almost like, why hasn't this already just been a thing that is more established? Like why someone like you has to come and establish your group and, well, you know. I, I think, I think honestly, because two things, number one or three, number one, I think that people don't really know who the fuck they are. Their identity determines their value, right? You'll never out earn your own self-worth and you don't think you're worth anything you're not going to feel like you're valuable and you're not going to talk to anybody a certain way. And I fucking hate ego people. I hate rich people to be truthful. I'm a broke person with money. I, I hate rich people. I hate being judged. I hate people looking at me and they fucking think they're better than me. I hate shit like that it happens all the time, but like, I hate that. So I'm there for the loss. I love where does that people. happen most? Just rich people, man. I mean, like I don't fucking, I mean, you say I dress. I mean, you say I'm in a fucking cut off shirt 99% of my life, you know, and I'm not in a suit. And I'm a business guy, but I'm not fucking dressing like, you know, yeah. like that. You know, I just, I don't want to fit in. I don't want to fit their mold. Either do you. I, that's why I love about you, dude. You're not trying yeah, to I fit don't give any. A fuck. <laughs> but that is why we like you. And by the way, that leads me to my second one. Why aren't people? Because they give a fuck what everybody thinks about them, bro. I mean, all of your advice that you've ever given to most people, they can go use it as long as they don't care what anyone else thinks. And they'll just fucking listen to what you say and go do it. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because I have a lot of people come up to me and like, I, I don't even give, I mean, I guess I do give business advice. I well, mean, I give, give life I advice give life every advice. day, yeah. I've, I have a lot of people come up to me and they just talk about like, yo, I've watched your videos for this many years. Now I have, my my own, I have my own business and all this shit. I hear it all the time. And I'm always just like, <laughs> I just said some shit on the internet about myself and what I experienced. And someone but, takes it and they're like applying it. I just find, I've always found that so interesting. But, but you know what? If I was like, dude, I wouldn't do that if I was you. You're like, fuck you. Oh they, yeah. They won't do that though. And that's the deal. So the more that we can get people to just be like, you know, go, like don't get civilized, don't conform, right? Like, dude, take advice from people that you want to be like. Yeah. And that's why I said, like, if you're being affectionate to your girl, I'd be like, oh dude, I need to do that to my girl. Like that's, I see you guys getting close. I want that. Like I just model proven practices, like shit that I want. I just model it. And, you know, it, again, it wasn't taught in school and my leaders didn't teach it to me, dude. My leaders taught me that, look, dude, if you're going to get married, like you're going to you're going to sacrifice your income or you're going to, are you going to fucking, you're not going to be with your family all the time. You got to choose, bro. 
You can't have it all. And Jackie was like, we can have it all. She was like, dude, we can have it all, Andy. She's like, we can be fucking ripped. We can be in shape. We can make money. We can have a loyal team. Okay, here's the deal. Like betrayal, I've been betrayed my whole life. I'm sure you've been betrayed too, right? So watch oh, this, yeah. check this shit out. But you have a couple good friends. You can think right now of a couple good friends that would always have your fucking back. If I was like piece of paper, write down two people right now, you know that no matter fucking what, they'd be there for you. Cool. If somebody betrayed you right now, you don't go fucking take it out on everybody. Be like, fuck you guys. You know what? Y'all betray me. Screw everyone. No, dude. You go to the people that have been loyal to you and you're like, I fucking love you even more now. Thank you. I fucking love that shit. Every time something happens, we have the ability to look at it for bad or for good. And dude, so like, that's why I built this company. When I call it a cult, it's a, it's a, it's a core beliefs, right? We don't fuck people over, right? We tell the truth. We're ultra direct. We don't walk on eggshells around each other. Nobody's each other's boss. Dude, you need a fucking babysitter? No, cool. Let's all go fucking do this together. Who, who, what, what content creators, what people out, influencers out there do you think are super fucking lame that like preach a message, but don't mean it? Man, that's 99% of the internet. What, what? I could tell you some people that I, I know that are true. Because I could lay, I mean, I think you're real. I mean, I think Joe Rogan's real. I think Dana White's real. I think, you know, I think Patrick Bet David's real. I think Brad Lee, my brother Brad's real. I think that, you know, Andy Frazella's real. Yeah. You know, I think Ed Milet's real. You know, um, I, I think. Do you remember I, that era of people where it was like, trying to teach people how to get rich but got rich by teaching people to get rich yeah <laughs> do you yeah. remember that yeah and it passed yeah that and was passed. a fucking interesting time yeah and everybody well they would rent a ferrari and rent a house and then shoot <laughs> yeah. the shit and then sell the course and, yeah. and honestly i bought all those courses to be truthful because i didn't fucking know um but what i did know and this is a, something for anybody watching this right now um something you'll learn about me because like i've studied a lot of your like anything you say to me even if you sold me a course and it was the worst fucking course ever and you were teaching me something, whatever it was, how to run a gym, whatever, I'm a fucking winner. So I'm going to get an ROI out of even the worst training course in the world. I'll take something out of it. And so I've never bought anything and didn't get an ROI out of it, never. Um, but now that I went through that process of elimination of kind of studying everybody and paying for self-development, I learned what I wanted. I, I, I got taught lessons like, oh, that sucked. But I didn't stop and say, well, you know, like there's, there, I guess that all this stuff sucks. No, dude. I mean, I've spent time at Andy Frizzell. I flew out of his house. That motherfucker's as real as they get, dude. That dude, I want to build. So we're labeled a sales training, training company, right? Which we are, everybody calls us a sales guy. But if we hung out, which, you know, like, like we, like we, we like your style. So when, when I meet you, I'm not coming out here to do a podcast. I'm like, dude, this guy's a part of our brotherhood. Anywhere we go anymore, if I fucking can help you, whatever it is, we got you. Like, we want to build an alliance with the greatest fucking people that are making the greatest differences. Yeah. And so, like, that's our goal, right? You know, and, and sometimes one's on this side of the world and one's on that side, but we're doing the same fucking purpose. Like, we want to change people's lives. We're real. We won't sell out for money, um, you know, and we're fucking, like, living a good life. And, you know, and plus the fact that you're jacked and work out and all that shit, we fucking love that, like, 20 <laughs> times more. So no, 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 it's super fucking important to me. It, it, it does, it, it, it's funny, because if I look back historically on, like, the shittiest employees I've ever had, they were out of shape. Dude, you work for I, me. I don't give a fuck, that's so true. Dude, all the people that work for me, which nobody shows up, they don't show up for you, and they're like, I can't believe Brad Lee's gonna make me work out. I don't make anyone work out, I just, like, I'm looking back at it, but and I'm like, they should know, though, damn. coming to work for him, that that's a fucking standard. So when you come to work for me, right, if, it, we only hire people inside of our coaching company, okay, like, because those are our greatest students. All these guys trained with me for years, so they are a product of the product. They don't sell our training, they are products of the product. I mean, they've all changed their life inside of it. So it's not like Grant Cardone's company hiring salespeople. Oh, you're a high ticket closer? Come sell my shit. No, these motherfuckers eat, sleep, and breathe everything that we talk about. So like, they're just saying like, dude, if you wanna do it, like you ran your play, you want a fucking different life, try to run our play. Hey there, sales warriors. Are you tired of facing objections left and right, struggling to close deals, and watching your competitors snatch away your prospects? Well, you're not alone. Recent surveys indicate that a whopping 72% of sales professionals struggle with handling objections, leading to missed opportunities and lost revenue. But fear not, there's a solution to this all too common problem. Enter Andy Elliott's Sales Playbook, your ultimate guide to mastering sales strategies and objection handling like a pro. 
Andy Elliott's sales playbook isn't just a collection of tips and tricks, it's a comprehensive roadmap to success packed with actionable insights and real world examples that you can start implementing right away. And here's the best part. Andy's playbook isn't just for seasoned sales veterans. Whether you're a rookie looking to kickstart your career or a seasoned pro aiming to sharpen your skills, there's something for everyone in this playbook. So if you're ready to arm yourself with the knowledge and confidence you need to crush objections, close more deals, and skyrocket your sales career, don't hesitate. Click the link below to grab your copy of Andy Elliott's sales playbook today. Remember, success favors the prepared. Equip yourself with the tools you need to outshine the competition and become a sales powerhouse. The time to elevate your game is now. Now let's make this your best year yet. Now let's get back to the video. That's it. Like just fucking run our play. This is what. So, we're doing. what do you think is so different about what you prescribe or or, or educate people on versus? Well, well, so a simple strategy: physical, mental, business. Right. Um, so we won't train anybody. I mean, and I mean zero. Yeah. That doesn't want to do anything uh, physically. Yeah. So like, if somebody's like, "Oh, I don't really care about my physical health," and I'm not your coach, you'll fucking hate me, man. I so will. if someone so so there's a you have a certain like uh, intake form or something like that where it's yeah it just says this like you know do you believe like physical fitness is super important to you and are you ready to start pursuing that if you're not now yes okay cool let's go to the next mental right like we you have to understand business isn't going to grow if you're not going to get mentally tough and if you can't control your own thoughts nobody can make you fucking happy but you yeah okay and the, and the gym and eating clean food and all those things that's a sacred place to get your mind in a mental place to go fucking kick ass in business okay by the way. I am in the art of communication. Um, if you speak all day long, I want you to think about this. If you're going to go speak at an event or if you're going to go do something, you want to hit that gym in the morning before you go talk to people because you get those fucking like serotonin, oxytocin, those fucking biological reward chemicals running through your fucking body. And then all day long, you're just in the flow state. You're in a good mood. You're transferring that shit to other people. And like, that's what we do. So I'm like, dude, if you're telling me you want to be good at sales, if you're not going to go and work out and exercise or do something 45 minutes before you start the day, you're not going to fucking make it, bro. Don't even come around me. You're going to hate me because I talk about it every day. And I don't, I don't even, I don't have, I have a gym for my guys, but like, I'm not plugging people into a fitness deal. I just, it's just a law. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's no, way of getting around the fact that like it's going to make you better yeah especially if you want to be the best right and honestly we built a brand at the one percenters like the one fucking percent right so it's like physical though mental and then business by the way another side uh how old are you 35 so 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 most people that are in business fucking destroy their families they just i'm just being honest it is so hard to run a business it is so hard and also be present when you go home and take care of your kids and do all these things. And so me and my wife have figured out like how to build a badass family and how to make a lot of money and also how to build a big team, how to stay fit, um, how, to, how to be close to God. I don't know if you believe in God or not, but I, I believe in God. And yeah, I just, just want to say like, I tell everybody, I'm like, dude, listen, I mean, like, like you got to have time for God too. And I just, I mean, my relationship with him is important. Me and my wife still pray every night. Our team, we pray in the meetings. Um, you know, I cuss a lot, dude. I mean, I'm just fucking me, dude. I'm a broken, lost person. What are you really bad at? What am I bad at? Yeah. Honestly, um, well, I cuss. That's probably my worst habit right now. I don't do drugs. I don't really drink. And I'm not saying there's anything against drinking. I'd love to go have... Uh, some drinks with my wife and dance all night and go home and have crazy sex and all this shit and fucking be wild. But we just, we're fucking in this like grow mode right now. Right. Yeah. And, and I'm so sharp because I've done such a good job of staying on this track that I could go cut loose, but the momentum is so high. I just don't want to lose my fucking edge. I know that like when you're building that edge, you're so afraid to lose it. You know what I mean? Of course. Like you're so afraid. Do you, do you know Rob, ba you, Dana Bailey. I saw you did yeah, a absolutely. deal with her. Yeah. Okay. So Rob Bailey's making us a song right now. Mm -hmm. Elliot Army, no fucking joke, man. Like, like this is the fucking song they're gonna play at my funeral. <laughs> what we fucking stand for Rob. all the time, yeah. So like, so like Rob and Dana, like in our company, we we listen to Rob Bailey all fucking day long, <laughs> all day. Like when you sign on, you sign a mental fitness waiver that says like I'm gonna fucking push you until you fucking die. You're gonna sign that onboarding into my company. And then number two, you're gonna listen to Rob Bailey music all the fucking time. And we're gonna brainwash. No John Mayer. No, but no. No, uh, we don't do John Mayer. Damn. You're going. You're going Gravity. to be such a good song. Yeah, but <laughs> and there could be exceptions here and there, but not inside the office. 
Um, but when I say this, I brainwash people with Rob Bailey's music because his stuff is like, I am, you know, I'm a fucking beast. It's yeah. like, I am, I am, I am, I am, I am. See, this so is, this is something that's really interesting. That's that a lot of people don't, don't, I don't think I ever even think about or recognize like the music that we listen to is like these mantras that mm. we're, if we're singing along or even just hearing, we're internalizing all this kind of shit. Yeah. Like literally is happening, whether you want to believe it or not. It's a thing yeah. just like how we sit in our own thoughts and we think about whatever it is. The more if we're, we're leaning towards whatever's negative, like you're likely to bring more of that into our life, in your life. Yeah, it's like the law of programming yourself. Yeah. That's, when did you start to recognize that? 2019. That night I went into the garage and, you know, did the workout, shaved my head, that fucking shit. Um, and just, I decided to look in the mirror and own my shit, realize I was a fucking coward. I was a pussy. I seriously, like my dad is a straight pushover, bro. He's a pushover. My mom left when I was young. I fucking, dude, I, I should have fucking kicked some people out of my life a long time ago. There's this thing called the golden handcuff syndrome. And people say, how'd you stay in the car business for 21 years and you fucking hated it? Well, in the beginning it was good because I made money, but I never changed anyone's life. I never had anyone tell me I changed their life. I made them a lot of money. But the golden handcuff syndrome is when you're making more money than you ever thought you'd make, but you hate what you're doing. So you can't fucking leave because you've built such a nice life around all that money you were making that if you quit that, you don't know how to do anything else, so you're fucked. So you're just stuck. It's almost like an abusive relationship. Dude, it fucking <laughs> sucked. It really did. And so my wife, dude, what I love about her is she's like, she's like, listen to me. She's like, so when someone changes, and I wanna see if you recognize this, people's eyes change. Like, have you ever noticed when somebody, like they told you they were gonna do something, but this time they fucking tell you and their eyes fucking change. And you're like, oh, yeah. Okay. My wife looked at me and she's like, your eyes change. She's like, fuck it. Let's go. And she sold our house. I didn't. She sold it. She sold everything. She's like, we're fucking going to, we're going to go back. We're going to go two step backs on purpose. And we're going to go fuck shit up together. And me and her, we just like are underdogs. We're, so number one, we're massive underdogs. When I say this, you know, we built a hundred million dollar business. We're doing all this cool shit. We fucking have all this. Let me tell you this. I'm the broken most motherfuck broken person on planet earth, dude. But you know what I am? I'm a person that's taken everything that's that ever has taught anyone or has taught uh, since 2019, all the things from you to Andy Frizzella to Ed Milet to Patrick Bede, to all the things that they taught, all the advice they've given. And dude, I've literally just owned it. And now I've become this. Like I honestly erased my own life, my old life, like I just erased it. I just, I built another one. And then my wife trained me like how to like come home and take care of the family. Like she's like, dude, you're 15 fucking hours. Go ahead. I want you to be a fucking killer. But when you fucking come home and you walk into this house, you're fucking home. You're with us now. That's it. That was the, that's here. the hardest thing for me is shutting that off. So my wife has a real easy trick and I'll tell it to you and you'll see how easy it is. So like with your girlfriend, like my wife always says, if you treat something like it's the beginning, there'll never be an end. Go back to fucking day one. That's it. She's like, bro, me and you, day one. Day one, every fucking day. She is also, when you walk into this house, just like you have those psycho eyes when you're at work, you need to have love eyes when you come to that house. I will literally come home and I'll walk through the door and she'll say, stop. And I love this. This is where you have to let your girl correct you because like she's protecting me. She's not being a fucking nag, dude. She wants me to fucking be great. Everyone else said that I wasn't. And she said I was. So I need to listen to what she's saying. She's like, turn around, go back out. Okay. Let that shit go. Come back in the house. You're going to be with us for a couple hours now. Okay? So you're going to fucking be with us. And then you're going to go fuck up. Was that hard anymore. at first? Yeah, I'm fucking <laughs> mentally, I'm fucked up in the head. But she's like, stop. She goes, look, I'm not going to let you in the house till you change your eyes. And like, I'll come back. She's like, there's those love eyes. Okay, come on. It's funny go. how that's such a real thing when you said it. Like, I've never, I've never put it into those words, but I get it. Yeah, and the cool thing is- It's a is, whole energy feeling. Yeah, and she she checks me. So I'm gonna tell you something, because you and your girl are together, and I don't know if you're gonna get married and all this stuff, but you know, obviously, it seems like y'all are pretty serious. There was a time in my, in my life where my wife was warning me about friends and people and things. And I was like, I didn't wanna hear it because I, we were making money, we were doing things. I didn't think it was that bad. And I was like, hey, I was like, babe, you're nagging me. And she was like, fine, fuck it. And then, then she stopped telling me. That's when you're going to get in fucking trouble. So funny, I can relate to that. Yeah, not so much my girl, but more so my mom. Yeah, that's my mom it, told dude. me things about people, and I was like, eh, I'm not worried about. It. Next thing you know, they got my ass. And she was fucking right. And guess what? So Fuck now, yeah. when she says something, like no matter what, 
I know her intuition, especially a, women have this crazy intuition. And, uh, and so I, if she says no, it's fucking no. Like no matter what, like I won't argue it because dude, listen, number one, she gives me everything I want. So if, if I want something and you know, she sees I really want it, she's going to give it to me. doesn't matter. She's always wanted me to be happy. But if she says no, it's because inside she's got this gut that she's like, no, something's not right. Long term, that's not good for these, these people. Something, look, Andy, today it's cool, but one day you're going to piss these people off. And I don't think we know who these people are when they get mad. I think they're different people. And we won't know until then. And my wife is so good. She'll actually piss people off up front. She's like, Andy, watch. We're going to piss these people off. And we want to see what's going to happen. We're going to intentionally piss them off. And sure enough, we piss them off. I'm like, babe, these, these are cool people. We piss them off, they blow up. She's like, see? And you were going to do business with those people? And you didn't think there was going to be a fucking problem? So, so, okay, but not everyone has, obviously, your wife in their life. No. Right? How can they, like, how can they identify the people that are, like, for them in that way if they don't well, have that? Well, I think being around the right people is important. You know what I'm saying? But I, it's, it's tough because, like, a lot of people, I think they think they're around the right people and they're not. Okay, let me tell you how you know if you're around the right people. Um, you know, and my wife could probably better answer that question, but I would tell you this, like, for real, um, I don't want you to tell me if you're right for me in my life. I don't want you to tell me what I want to hear. I want you to tell me what the fucking truth. Dude, if we're really boys, let's say me and you get close. So after this, we, we, we fucking run into each other. We start kicking it. We start to, dude, you got friends right now. I could ask you, who's your best friend? And you would tell me. And I would ask you, if you did something, would that guy fucking speak up and tell you? Like fucking tell you regardless of how it would hurt your feelings? Would he tell you? Yeah, of course. That is her. She just fucking tells me the truth. My wife doesn't walk around in eggshells. She doesn't care about my feelings. She's in this with me to protect me because she knows that like I have a good heart, but I bet you have a really good heart. I bet you get taken advantage of all the sure. fucking time. Oh yeah. That's me. And Jackie is the fucking cartel leader that makes sure <laughs> that I don't get fucked because I'm the guy that thinks I can fix everyone. Have you gotten better at that yourself because of her? Oh, yeah, dude. Dude, that's why I said, like, since we started building our business, like, Jackie is like, you know, at the end of your anger is at the end of your fate. Don't get fucking mad, Andy. Companies burn to the ground because of ego. They burn to the ground because of anger. She's like, no ways, man. She's like, listen, we're not getting caught in that shit. We're not eating out of fucking anyone's hand. Doesn't matter what happens to the world. We're going to be different than everyone else. And so how do I find these people? Like, if you're telling someone, like, hey, you need to lose weight. And they're like, I can't believe you said that about me. Well, dude, the friends you have right now are fucking assholes because you're fucking fat and they're not telling you or they, or they're letting you get fatter. And I'm the guy that wants you to be healthy and be more attractive and look good. And you're fucking mad at me. Yeah. You're with the wrong people. Right. Well, hey, you're, you need to be with people like me that tell you the truth. That, the only way that people grow is trust is, is a truth and honesty. And that's why I love your shit. Cause you're ultra direct. If you'll notice all the people I said that I believe are the, um, the people that have changed my life, um, super direct. Yeah. I fucking love it. Well, man, why do you think, why do you think the, the, the world has gotten like so coddling to people? Like, cause the fact that there are people that would rather see you, I mean, I, I kind of know the answer, but I think they'd rather see you do not as good as you could because where they're at. Yeah. But like, that's on like a massive scale now. Like, yeah. it's just like, it seems like, People like do really want to see you do good when you're not doing good. And then as you start to do good, they're like, oh, no, I want to I want to see him do bad now. He's doing too good or she's doing too good or whatever it is. Yeah, it's it's because people put boundaries on you, man. Like, listen, like, let's say, listen, the, your biggest supporters are going to be people that you haven't met yet. Yeah, they're, they're not even going to be in your life right now. And I'm going to tell you why. If I knew you and I would be like, oh, dude, I know who he is. And so I put a label around you. I put a box around you and I put boundaries on you. I do. And I put them on me too, but I put them on you. And when you go outside those boundaries, I don't fucking like that shit. Because you have a picture about how you think I should be. Yeah. And you're fucking outgrowing it. And then I don't like that. And so anyways, when I see you trying to take risks. That but that I know, is in relationship to the person self. Yeah. And, but then it's also like the God of this generation is comfort. And so if I'm pursuing comfort and I see you going for uncomfortable shit, like I'm going to try to pull you back. And so like. But the, wouldn't you say that that's because of like, if it's you in this case, it's because of your own. I'm not pursuing it as much as that person is. 
Yeah, like, yeah, it's a limiting belief, right? I have it, and then so I have it for you. And by the way, listen, if somebody ever tells you, this is the truth, if somebody ever tells you that you, you're not capable or you, you can't do it, number one, it could be partly them. They don't have the belief. But number two, there could be some truth. Your ego could be so fucking sensitive, right, that you're a little baby and you're a little bitch and if you went to do something hard, they figured you'd probably get your ass kicked and then get hurt. So they're trying to stop you. Dude, you're a savage. So people should be telling you, if you're like, yeah, I'm going to go build this thing. They're like, fuck yeah, you are. Dude, you're to the point now when you say you're going to go do something, you probably don't have a lot of people saying, oh, you're not going to oh, do yeah, that. Oh, yeah, not now. No, no way. now they're like, fuck yeah, yeah, you are. I can't wait to see it. You know why? Because you've given them evidence that like, watch me, motherfucker. I'm going to go do this. So- Perfect. So to the kid or to the person who hasn't given enough evidence to people in their life, they're all going to hate. You're just going to have to be a part of it. And by the way, like uh, you're, you watch a lot of fighters. I don't watch a lot of fights, but like, I'm like, my guys are all, they love fighting and I, and I love it too, but I've just always been in business, but like Conor McGregor, he's like, it, you know, fucking it's fuel. It, it feeds me. It motivates me. I mean, you know, if I was to ask you what, what makes you fueled me telling you, Man, Bradley, dude, you're you're so great, man. You're awesome, you know. Or like, dude, you're not gonna fucking do that. You're fucking. Yeah. Well, it's funny. Bro. I look back on a lot of the stuff that I'd done, like the weird viral videos. It was always the best things were always when people were like, "Yeah, that's probably not a good idea." I was or, like, "Oh, I'm gonna try it then." Yeah. When when someone tells you you can't do something, like I'll never forget specifically Nadim. I love this guy. He's a great guy. But we were filming this video, and I was filming this squatting on like a hoverboard with like three fifteen or whatever when the hoverboards Shit. were popular. Uh huh. And uh, I was like, I'm going to do this. And he was like, nah, it's because I've always done kind of crazy, stupid shit. And he was like, nah, I think this one's a really bad Dude, idea. Crazy, and I was bro. like, this is, I'm doing this today. <laughs> I have to Did do this. Do it? Yeah. And it went viral and all that. She was on ESPN and shit. It was crazy. You're fucking But crazy. it was one of those things where I, I literally remember that moment. And he's a good person. He's not a bad person by any means. No, he's he not didn't even, want you to get hurt, man. Yeah, yeah. exactly. He's like, yeah. I don't think this is smart. And I was like, then I have to do it. Yeah. What and, if I pull it <laughs> off? Like, Dude, this is what I always tell people, man, as crazy as that is, you may not be where you are today had you not fucking done that. Well, yeah, I mean, everything stacks to, to everything That's else. That's what I'm saying. Like, sure. dude, that could have been the thing that made that one relationship, that made that other one, that made these things happen. All the dots align, man. God gives us these opportunities, and we either say yes or no. Yeah. And at the end of the day, man, you train every day. You train your mind. You train physically. You train your marriage, your relationship. You train your team, your company. To, give, to be stress test. How do you find balance though? Because I've I've always struggled with the relationship side of things. Like historically, like so terrible. So so here's the deal, man. Like for real. And I want to say like the reason why I I will get into this for a minute because number one, ninety nine percent of people they get their fucking ass kicked not because they don't know the word business well, because their personal life fucking sucks. Okay, yeah. and it didn't start out sucking. It started out good. And then they wanted to get in this business, you know, I'm going to become an entrepreneur and all this shit. And they go do all this. And then all of a sudden it fucking takes everything you have. That's the law of success to fucking make it and win. You have to become obsessed. You have to lose your mind to this, this craft. And then what happens is we learn, our family learns to live without us essentially because we're fucking trying to win so big. And if you are great at business and I'm great at business, but you don't have a good healthy home and I do, I'll beat your ass. It's because you're going to burn out eventually. Eventually, you and your girl are going to split. That's going to cause emotional fucking pain in you. You're going to get hurt, and you're going to fucking crash, and here I am fucking winning. And I'll beat you, especially long game, which everything is long game. You may beat me short game, but long game, I'll beat you. And, and so, so, how, so what's the fix? You got to take your family with you. Look, I got my 13-year-old son right here with me. You know why? Because my greatest responsibility is my son. He's, it's my fucking son, bro. Like He's, he's me. If I don't fucking take care of him, I shouldn't get to take care of anyone else. Not yeah. one single human. I have to take care of me first, and I take care of me for him, for my two daughters, and for, and for my wife. I can't, listen, my team, they'll all, if you ask them, if you, and I mean this, I have an unrecruitable team. And when you say, what does that mean? That means that if you walked up to one of my guys on my team and you said, I'll pay you 10 times what Andy's paying you, why don't you come work for me? They'd be like, fuck you. They don't work for money. And you say like, what do you mean? Well, me and Jackie realized, dude, that like we wanted to build something that was different than anything else. And so all these broken people, we've never had love. 
Dude, honestly, I thought about why I wanted to get in shape. It was truly so I would love myself more and so Jackie would love me more. And then honestly, I felt like I fucking just, I can't operate when I don't take care of myself anymore. Like I just have to look in the mirror and like me. And I'm not good to anyone else if I don't like me. Um, also, from a perspective of like my team, so they look up to me because I take care of myself physically. My, 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 my wife and my family, dude, I take such good care of my team. I mean, my family. My wife, me and her, we're affectionate, hands locked everywhere we go, and it's no fucking fake shit. Me and her, when we're, there's not something right, we fight immediately. Fighting is good. <laughs> no, no, it is good. It's good, but you got to fight fair, and you can't. And what does fair mean? It means you can't get historical. We have rules. Like you can't bring up something from the past. It's got to be about this. Number two, we got to hear each other out, right? And dude, like most people never learn how to really build a relationship. Also, the biggest fights that we have are because I'm not present. It's the truth. Like, I'm not present. And so, like, if you can fix this, if, if you're just, and so there's a term, we, we say, be where your feet are. And, and Jackie explained this to me, and this is, this is going to make really good sense. And if someone gives you the play, if you run it, you score. If you don't run it, you don't score. So here's the play. You just have to be where your feet are. It goes like this. I mean, being present. Yep. So it's, it's, the, it's the greatest skill on planet Earth. If there was one skill, I would say the art of communication would be the greatest skill to make you money, but the greatest skill to have a rich life Getting rich, communicate. Having a rich life is going to be the art of being where your feet are. So I don't care how many hours you work a day. doesn't matter. When you're there, you fuck shit up. The second you leave, where are you going? To the gym? Good. That's a sacred place. No fucking texts, no calls, no emails. Phone down. Fuck shit up. Gym. Home. You're with who? Wife, kids, girlfriend. Dude, fuck shit up. It's so hard to stay true to sometimes. But you know what's hard? It's not staying true to it and being successful and having a fucking unfulfilled life, having a hole in your heart. And dude, I want you to think about something. Your girl, right? She, you, you fucking motivate all these people. You got all these people around the world that you motivate, you inspire. You know, that say you changed my life. I know they tell you this. Dude, your fucking greatest responsibility, right, is your girlfriend. Your mom. And dude, think about it. How often do you motivate your mom? Your girlfriend. How often do you call them? I'm going to tell you, imagine your mom call you today and be like, man, I watch Andy Elliott shit. He fucking fires me up. You're like, fuck, that's my job. That's my fucking job to bring good <laughs> shit to my fucking mom. And here I am doing all this shit for all these other people. So my wife says something. And this is why she's super direct. She's always like, who are you trying to please? You know, like what's most important to you? Like if you got sick today, right, Bradley? If you got sick, just... For real, like, who would be there? And you'd say, well, my mom. Okay, cool. Well, she's fucking number one then. My girlfriend. Okay, cool. She's number one then. So, like, each day there's a bucket for you to make sure they're taken care of. Yeah. And, and, and dude, when you take care of that bucket, dude, you feel on fucking fire, bro. Nobody can fuck with you when you're taking care of that. And those people are getting your best. And by the way, you can give the world your best and give it to them. So I used to say this, it's an excuse. I used to say, well, isn't that hard? And my wife goes, you're limiting beliefs. You're fucking one dimensional, Andy. Who the fuck told you you can only make money, but you can't have a badass marriage. You can't be a badass, you know, fucking parent. You can't be in great fucking shape. Like who fucking told you that? I didn't fucking tell you that. Okay. Like someone fucking sold you on that shit and it's a fucking lie. And anyways, she brainwashed had, had me. Had anyone sold you on that ever? Everybody sold me on it that we couldn't, but Jackie was the first one that said I could. And I swear on my life, dude, brought it, no joke. I feel like this shit should be called Jackie or something, not Elliot. What's going on here? What the fuck's going on here? It's the truth. Yeah, it's like, it's, dude, you know, everything is because of her. I feel like we should interview her. What the fuck? You that's what I said here. in the beginning. What the fuck's going on? That's what I said in the very beginning. That's crazy, though. I'm not even joking, dude. Like, I said that in the beginning. Listen, that's, and I'm going to tell you why we're growing so fast, like truly like our brand. I have hundreds of thousands of guys that are, I have 500,000 people that are in our digital training system, okay, that we communicate, coach with. Our next five events are all sold out. We do a couple a month. It's fucking crazy. And you know the number one thing that everybody says? Like, and, and they love the fitness aspect. They love the sales. They love the closing. They love the business, the strategies. The number one fucking thing is they go, dude, since I've watched how you and your wife run, like, my fucking life has been way better. It's, it's the devil only attacks what's valuable, and he's fucking taking the homes out, bro. He's taking the homes out. 
And so like, if I was going to take you out, like I would come after your girl. So if like, you so don't, that's what the devil does. If I get it. And so if you don't have a girl, then what is that? What is that for everyone else? Then, then you just need to, you need to immerse, like total immersion. You need to immerse yourself in to a brotherhood. Um, and you say, what is that? That's just a fucking band of brothers. Like, dude, like, honestly, if I wasn't married, if I didn't have my team, like, I'd be like, I'm working for fucking you. I don't care. I'm fucking here. So whatever, what do I need to do? I wouldn't even care about money. I just be like, I'm fucking here because I need to be around good people and that's it. And then there's two things that ruins a guy's life, wrong girl and not having a brotherhood. And you know, those two things to be true because it's you know, a fact, yeah. Yeah. So like, um, and so like, so, and the same things that I'm saying, when I say brotherhood, all my guys that I, I have, I, ha I have a true brotherhood that's called the, it's a coaching program called the brotherhood. And all these guys, they all bring their wives with them. And like, we don't separate men from women. They're a fucking team, dude. And we're just, we're getting them fucking ripped, shredded, growing their business, teaching them how to build culture in an environment. Um, so like you have a team, right? Um, you know, you have a team um, and your companies should be an example for other companies. Your company should be a hero making machine. So anyone that's working inside of your company should literally becoming fucking the greatest example on planet earth. They should be walking billboards to like what fucking human excellence looks like. And that's my guys. And you know, and by the way, like if you complain in our company, we'll throw you through a fucking window. I swear to God, there can be a problem and we'll solve that shit, but we don't complain. We don't fucking talk shit on each other. We, everything is direct face to face. No egos. We're all alphas. And we're the most loving fucking people. No one's in charge. We have a hundred guys in our company. Nobody's in charge. Nobody's in charge. There's no fucking boss. We are so all. So who's alpha of, then? All of us. Because alpha's at the top. We're all alpha. God. Just fucking with you. No, but it's the truth. There's got to be one though. I know it's God. It yeah. sounds like it's her. <laughs> it, it actually sounds like it's her. It, it actually is her. You yeah. know what I mean? And hey, listen. I mean, if you want to talk to her for a minute, she can. No, no, no. She's great. No, like she's a fucking savage, dude. She's more no, of a great. man than most. Unless you want to get on here, I don't know, dude. Yeah, yeah come here. You can sit over there. Here, here, come sit right here, man. Yeah. Sit, sit on that one. Hey, but because because you and you can ask her, but like, she's the cult leader, bro. Yeah, it sounds like that. It's yeah, crazy. Yeah, she's the car cartel leader. I mean, my wife. She's one here. I'm not even joking, dude. Like she's. Like she's the savage. What? What? Oh, sorry. I guess yeah. No, scoot to that one and pull, pull that over a little bit towards you. That mic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but no. But but, oh, he's but go ahead. Way, that? Yeah. Okay. So before we get into this, uh, why do you think? Like, why is making money so important to people? Well, making money is the if, if to a lot of people feels like it's success. Right. And by the way, if you want to help people, you need to make money. Okay. Like, I mean, I can't fuck. I can't, I can't, I want to give her, I promised her the ride of a lifetime when she was with me. And that means me being the man for her. But also I want to take her on vacations. I want to have a nice house. I want nice cars and I want all that. And that's the beginning. That's early, you know, early success. But then after that, we also want to go do cool shit. We want to build a big business. We want to build big companies. We're building an Elliott army. Event so what, Center. what do you think though? What do you think matters the most? changing people's lives. And I, you know what I learned? I'm going to give you, I'm going to tell you something real quick. This is fucking crazy. So if anybody wants to make money, this is the key. I think the reason we're making well, money. Who people you become determines what you earn, who you become. So like, it's not the skill you learn. It's who you become, who you be. The, the, the world's a mirror. And dude, for, for 39 years, I didn't become who I was supposed to become. And then finally, when I did, the most I ever made was 2 million. Dude, I went to make it a hundred million. And I'm going to tell you this. How did a guy 50 X his income? I'm going to tell you how I became the person I always wanted to fucking be. And now I help people every day. And the more you give, don't, I know they say the more you get, but like, I didn't try to, to get back. I just wanted to become, so she would be proud of me. And dude, we just fucking grew this crazy empire, bro. But before you made the money, we made decision, made the decision to not make decisions based on money. So we weren't going to be a slave of that currency of money. So making money was just a product, a byproduct of being who we really were. Because what do you think money represents to people? To people, success. Yeah, you think it's a representation of success? Yeah, I mean, it's just, I mean, everybody goes around and, you know. I think everyone a, tries to get money because I think everyone is trying to get love. Yeah, Truly. that's what I was saying, dude. I just, Truly. honestly, I thought when I got in shape, 
like she was just going to love me more. And like, honestly, like, I don't know how you grew up, but like, like I didn't have a mom growing up. So like, I just like, it didn't, it didn't exist. My dad was never home. So it was like, we were raised by kids and dude, I was like, I had a girl break my heart when I was a young kid. And then I just ripped everyone's fucking heart out after that. I was I've like, there. fuck everyone. I've been there. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I would intentionally, <laughs> so I've been there. I would intentionally hurt people like, yeah. and enjoy it. Like I told her, and when I met her, when I was 26, she was 24. She was like, Hey, you fucking around on me. Like I'm gone. You get drugged. You're drunk. You fuck around on me. You're gone. And I had never had anybody. I only dated blondes before I was with her and nothing against blondes, but like, <laughs> no, like I want to tell you that Jackie, I like had a certain kind of, you know, relationship. She was like, everybody was like, oh, he's a player. She's like, no, I, no you don't fucking play me. Like, dude, if you're, we're going to be together, you're going to fucking be with me and we're going to do shit. We're not going to be together. It's fucking it. Like, I don't need you. She goes, I'm independent. I'm going to make money on my own. I'm good. She was more successful than me when I met her. So like what I loved about Jackie was Jackie didn't need me. I told so them, I'm not going to cry for grew. you. I'm not going to be like, why did you do this to me? Like, I don't deserve this or give me a reason. I was like, you just won't ever see me again. It's totally cool. And I could tell she fucking was serious. And I was like, oh shit. So then I straightened up. Like to me, honestly, Bradley, like I, I, she puts these fucking rules, which I'm a rule breaker. I break every rule. And she tells me the rules I can't break. And so like, she keeps me in that line. Cause I always call her outside the lines and she'll say like this, you have to stay in these lines. And she wants me to grow. She wants me to do good but she helps me become who I need to become. Every, everybody, your girlfriend is the same way. I promise you. When you guys grow together, she's that same way. It doesn't matter. I mean, every, women have a very good intuition. I mean, most of them have a very good intuition. And so, so the best thing I did was when I went to self-develop, like we went to Patrick Bet David's event when I first started training, right, to, to change. I took her with me. I bought a ticket for her. Everywhere I went, she went because Jackie would perceive the information differently. Super important guys, if you're watching this video right now and you're like, Andy, I'm not built like that. Bullshit. Yes, you are. Okay, you gotta train. That's the way it works. Train or complain, it's your choice. Okay, every day I train the greatest in the world. You know what I mean? Are you ready to kick some ass and build your legacy and make history if you are? In the description box below on this YouTube video, there's gonna be a link. You click on it, enter your phone number, email, full name, and I will personally reach out to you in the next 24 hours. If you're serious about kicking some ass, going to the new level, recreating, next version of yourself, I'm your guy. Let's kill it. You know what I mean? But I also wouldn't be fighting against you. See, a lot of times business so and family are always fighting against each other. So a lot of times you probably are like, hey, you know, you'd stay home, you know, and then you're like trying to share what you're doing, but she doesn't really understand. So society teaches you to fight against each other. What if you could do it the same? How much more would your spouse or your girlfriend motivate you if you brought her along the ride? So. Well, you get also a different, a completely different perspective on something like yes. you'll have something a little bit more intimate as far as like knowing him to a degree of what he wants or what you guys want together. Exactly. So it makes sense to have that counterpart. Yeah, yeah dude, you know? I always tell guys this, like I'll see a married couple and I'm like, are you guys really best friends? And like, I'm really drunk. You got to remember the way I talk, like some people are like, I don't like that. That's yeah. totally cool. This is how I process it. I'm like, and they're like, yeah, we're best friends. I'm like, cool. What's your wife's fantasy? Do you know what it is? Like, has she told you what her fantasy is? And they're like, well, I'm like, no, you're not fucking best friends, dude. You're not that fucking close. You let's think? just, let's just be real. Like you're, listen, she's my best friend. I know everything about her. And she knows everything about me. She knows every fucked up thing about me. And I'm going to tell you why she needs to know it. Because when I'm going day to day, she can look at me at any given time and she can tell when I'm starting to shift. And it's her job to say, hey, I fucking know that look. Come here. And she helps me stay straight. So we, I would tell you in a relationship, I truly believe God, God will bring a man and a woman together, right? So that they can become them against the world so that they can learn each other so good that they can keep each other growing great. So she's my best friend, she's my fantasy, she's my wife, she's a children, she's a, she's the mother of my children, she's my business partner, she's my workout partner, dude. She's fucking everything to me. And so like I don't have to go f I don't have a best friend that I talk to about problems and not with her. She gets everything and I need her to know me. If I'm thinking something crazy, like seriously, like if I'm thinking something crazy, like I fucking tell her. 
The reason why is I want her to know the craziest sides of me so that she can fucking help me. How do you think you find a relationship like that? It's not easy. It. You make it. We, we, had a, we made a lot of mistakes. I mean, we had to learn through pain, through, you know, everything, hurting each other. And we just got tired of being sick and tired. We actually learned from it. It was like, you know, when is enough enough when you love somebody? When is enough enough, you know, that you're giving it your all? In our case, I discovered that I was a problem. You know, I was independent. I felt like I didn't need him. I felt like I didn't, you know, I didn't work towards something. I was the one that was given up because, you know, it was like me. I could take care of myself. I didn't really need a man to take care of me. There's a, there's a problem with a lot of men. There's also a problem with women because we have egos too. So in our case, we're like, okay, we're going to have to either, we're going to either fight to freaking kill each other or we're going to fight to grow and explode because our personalities are very similar. And that's what we decided to do. So you have to, you have to build it. I mean, we, we built it through pain. So what, what are the, what are the so core much. things that you identify in the other person to decide this is worth building with this person? Well, first of all, you have to decide if you're going to be on the same team or not, you know? So when somebody fights, sometimes they ask me, you know, some, some people on our team, they're like, Oh, I'm fighting with my wife. And this is what they have. I'm like, are you guys going to break up? Well, no, we're not going to break up. Okay. Well, then why are we making this such a big deal? It's as simple as that. Like if you're going to fight together, you're going to have to work through things. But just knowing, I mean, it's being vulnerable, which is the hardest th thing I think for most couples is like he gave me the power to hurt him, but he trusts that I won't hurt him and vice versa. So that's why he's talking about being able to share his deepest secrets, his fantasies, all these different things is because I know him and I know that he knows that we're on the same page, that no matter what happens, I'm going to be with him side by side and I'm not going to judge him. See, a lot of times we hurt each other in the past. And if we were different and the reason why we are able to make it and other couples aren't is because we decided that we're not going to get historical with what we did or I'm going to believe him this time when he tells me, hey, let's do this together. I'm also going to hold him accountable when he tells me, hey, I'm not good at something or I can't do this. I'm going to tell him, yes, you are good at this. And I'm going to freaking snap his ass because I believe in him and he's going to believe me to do the same. So it's, it's a constant thing that we're always building each other up and encouraging when one gets weak, the other one makes them strong. And that's what we've been yeah, doing. Yeah. This, this is a good one, dude, right here. What I'm about to say. So Jackie, like when, when a guy fucks up, right. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you know a buddy that's with someone, or maybe you do. And, uh, and just like me and, and you fuck up your, your woman will either do one or two things. Okay. So this is important for women just to know this, who you tell your fucking man is, is who he is. Mm. Okay. So if, if he, if he fucked up, okay. And you're not going to be with him, just fucking leave, but don't stick around and remind him of what, what kind of piece of shit he is. Because if I'm with you and I'm like, you know, you fucking do this all the time and you do this, dude. I don't even want you to be a good person because I'm reminding you of how fucking shitty you are all the time. Yeah. And, and so like the dude, the secret that she did with me was that Jackie, when I made the commitment to change is that she was like, okay, cool. And like, this is who you are. And I'm going to tell you this, like, there's this, also, this is who I see you as. And that was big for me. There's also a proven stage. Cause you made a, you gave him a question earlier and I was thinking, you know, how do people like try to break that mold of not falling into mediocrity or changing? Right. So a lot of things is that we make some false promises. You made false promises maybe to your family and said, hey, I'm going to do this. And then you change ventures and then you, you've messed up. So they're kind of like, well, he's going to give up. Like he's never really done this before. And they kind of make you weak, right? So the first thing is like, don't make false promises. And then when you're ready to change, you know, your spouse will really know by looking at your eyes whether you're willing to change or not. Because you've let them down whether you like to know it or not. Like you've made a false promise to yourself. And you know, you have a gym, you have a lot of people that come into the gym and say, hey, Monday, I'm gonna start working out. You sell a bunch of memberships and they go in there for a few days and then they give up, right? They make fal false promises to themselves. They make false promises to their kids. They make false promises to the people that we love the most because we're comfortable with them. But when you're ready to make an actual change, when you're ready to be like, hey, your eyes, changed i have to i had to believe him because he did make some false promises mm -hmm. but i noticed there was a shift how sure are you because if you already let your person the people that you love down you're going to have to prove yourself again because you fucked it up it's just the truth you know if you really care about those people you're going to have to go through that proving stage and they're going to test you i test him still to this day about a lot of different things to see if he really wants what he's asking for and then I see when he really does because I see it in his eyes. I what, see it how determined he is. What sort of tests? Like, what do you mean tests? Like, like just questions? 
And lots of different things like in the, you know, there's, I mean, just in our coaching program, we have seminars that people come through and they're like, I mean, there's wives that tell their husband all the time that they need to change. They need to do certain things. And then they go and listen to this bald guy with short shorts, his nipples hanging on. They listen and they change and they challenge him. And they're like, why did you, I've been telling you the same thing for years. Why did you have to go listen to somebody else? Sometimes it's timing. Sometimes it's God. Sometimes it's just basically you wanting to change. You're sick and tired of being sick and tired. So the wife, what she's going to do is she's going to test him and she's going to be like, well, I don't believe you. Or she's going to be, you know, testing him in different ways. Andy could be like, hey, I want to go buy this. But he wants to buy everything in the whole world every single day. I'm like, no, well, we don't need that. And then he'll ask me again and again and again. I'm like, well, maybe he wants that and I'll give it to him. There's a lot of different things. Women were good at testing our men, if not, you know. What are some things that you don't think can change? Do you think anything could change? I think, I think anything can change. Dude, human beings are so resilient, dude. Yeah. I'm telling you, dude, like we see miracles every day. I mean, you know, you see it all the time. I mean, your your life is, you're out in the open. You get millions of DMs a day. I mean, it's weird. You know? It's so weird. But dude, it's fucking miracles, bro. And so like human beings are resilient, you know, like, We've watched people that were going through divorce just turn around just because they're in the right room together for 10 minutes. They hear something and then they go together. Um, I've watched people that, just like people have lost it all, I've watched people that literally turn a corner and then they become one of the greatest leaders ever. Dude, I was a horrible leader. I mean, horrible. I never had a good leader. So what the fuck does a good leader mean? So I had to be a bad leader my whole life and then to wake up and be like, fuck that. Like, what is a winner? Okay. What's a loser? Okay, if you want to be a winner, just flip what fucking losing is. So I took what all the bad leadership I did, and then I just flipped it, and then I became a good leader. And then like, dude, but how do you stay true to that? Like, it's because it's so hard for people to stay consistent in that in think, the actual changing remember process. She said pain teaches. Yeah. Right. I think when the pain overrides the fear of change, people change. So like yeah. when the pain gets so high, like we said earlier, yeah. people are like, "Fuck it," you know. Like, dude, honestly, like I'm gonna tell you, almost kind of not having another choice. Yeah, like Jackie, um, one of the things she said too, remember that day she grabbed my love handle, she also followed it up with another little fucking sentence that was like, hey, me and the kids have learned to live without you. And, you know, she didn't want to hurt me. She needed to fucking tell me the truth. And I didn't want to hear it. And so I went and looked in the mirror and I realized, dude, they have. Like, I'm in all the fucking pictures and I don't even remember when we took any of them. I was always thinking about being back at work. And she just asked me, she's like, look, I want you to be a winner. I want you to make a lot of money. I want you to be successful. I want you to be fucking happy. But also you promised me the fucking ride of a lifetime when you married me. I fucking decided I wasn't gonna sleep with no other guys. I was gonna be just with you. I was gonna fucking marry your ass. I was gonna do everything with you. And this is the fucking shit I get. Fuck you. You it's know? Like, it's like having to be honest with yourself too. Yeah, but I needed that dude. And by the way, like the way that I'm telling it to you, she didn't tell me that way, but that's the way I heard it. Yeah, I know. Like if you were to you. yeah, but, if, <laughs> but Brad, if, uh, Bradley, if you were to tell me like, "Hey, go get in shape," I would hear you say, "You're a fat put, fucking piece of shit. Get your bitch ass in the gym." That's, <laughs> that's, that's how funny. I process it, right? Yeah. I don't I mean my guys. We all process it that way. I love way. when he thinks he paraphrases me. Like maybe that was my first two years of self development. All I listened to was David Goggins. So I, like I program myself to receive. I, I, I'm my own drill sergeant, right? So when you say something to me, then I just repeat it back to myself, and I think I say it to myself that way. And, you know, anyways, just like betting people wrong, dude. Like we've honestly, she's an underdog. I'm an underdog. My whole team are underdogs. All of us have all been betrayed. We've never had loyalty. You know, I mean, one of my guys, Jacob over here is 24. His dad got killed in front of his face when he was 10 years old. You know, like these guys that go undergo like a lot of fucking pain. These guys I can really relate with. And I'm like, dude, do you guys want to build something fucking badass? And they're like, yes. And that's what we built. And that was Elliot Army. Mm -hmm. And then I got a couple guys like Ali. You know, he's an MMA fighter. Never, he's born in Africa. He fucking speaks 20 different fucking languages. Uh, <laughs> you know, like, but like he's, he's, uh, he, he's never had a drink of alcohol in his life. Probably smart. He's super fucking smart. Yeah. But do you know smart. what? His whole life, he's never had anyone. He's, he's addicted to pushing. Mm -hmm. He's never been around people that were like better or could keep pushing and wouldn't lay off. And dude, the second time, the first time he saw our program, he's like, dude, I need to fucking be in the middle of this shit. Dude, I love this. It's just, it's just a brotherhood and uh, it's a company, man. And, and anyway, so, but we're all about taking our families with us, um, our, our kids. So the Elliot group, um, Elliot army, we have our, our, 
our 70,000 square foot facility. We have a big gym in the middle of it. The rest of it is a big selling ground floor. There's tons of energy. There's a 500 person uh, seminar room that's downstairs. It's always filled with people daily. Um, but the coolest thing is in the back of it, there's a school. So all of our, our kids, they all go to school there. We teach them, you know, we have uh, military teachers that teach them God, discipline. They read Andy Frazella, you know, Jocko Willings. They read, that's the books they read, dude. That's We're funny. raising them to be killers. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? My son, uh, right here, he's, he's 13, my son Ian, all my daughters. Rob Bailey flew down, uh, first time I met him was two and a half years ago, and he flew down to the lion's den. He was a mind fuck. He's like, dude, what the fuck is this? <laughs> and, um, you know, uh, my kids, I introduced them to my kids, and at that time, they were 10, 7, and 5. And um, my kids know every Rob Bailey song. Yeah, no, All of them. He's they know yeah, and more they were lyrics singing, than they, him. They were singing the song. I said, like, hey, sing 100 to Rob Bailey. <laughs> and they're like, 100, 100, only got one bass. And they're, and, and then Rob's when he like, cusses, like, when he says, I'm a motherfucking beast, yeah, he's like, I'm, I'm a, a beast. beast. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and Rob's like, this is crazy, man. He's like, they're not getting that from you because you cuss all the time. Right. But yeah. they know, though, to pull it. Like, they know. They're a little wiser. Yeah. And dude, <laughs> but, but I pull my kids on stage all the time. Like I pull them on stage in front of, and do I you make try them, not to swear when they're on stage or what? No, <laughs> Dude, there's no tame go, in this man. guy. Tell oh, why is it so easy to swear? It feels so good. But you know what? <laughs> <It's> crazy. <laughs> hey, but and I tell people, and people are like, they're like, I, I could listen to this guy, but I just can't. I might like, do listen to me, man. You're always going to hang on to something, okay? Yeah, yeah. If, if if I said a whole message and it could change your life, but the only thing you got hung up on was a cuss word, man. Come on, dude. Yeah. Come on, man. I mean, I mean, it just goes back to like the selective, like picking what you want to listen to or not and creating excuses why it's, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, he swore though. So yeah. like yeah. that, you, you probably get that on the internet. Like you, cause I've seen people like, talk or like critique, like what, uh, your oh, style. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. People it's hate, very... people hate our directness, but we've honestly, I don't want to be anyone else. Okay. So when, so when I came out, um, when, when I wanted to start my sales training program, um, when I came out, I was like. I don't want to be like, well, first of all, I thought everybody's going to say, there. this guy's a Grant Cardone wannabe because, you know, he was in the sales industry, right? Yeah. And it's like maybe you open in gyms and people are like, oh, he's a wannabe of this guy, whatever, right? Yeah. Um, I don't know if anybody's ever said that about anyone or something or whatever, but like I knew I was going to get that. So the first thing I want to do is I was like, fuck that, no suits, you know, no bullshit. Like I'm, I'm running around, I'm going to fucking work out, I'm going to get fucking jacked. And all these guys that are in their fucking 30s and 40s that do business, they're all fucking fat. They're all fucking lazy. They, they don't take care of themselves. They don't, they're not even fucking their wives anymore. They're fucking lazy. They're fucking pieces of shit. Their team aren't loyal to them. They're fucking double standard, non-fucking leader pussies. Like it's everywhere, bro. And I'm being really harsh because I'm just telling you the truth. They're fucking weak everywhere. Yeah. And so I was like, dude, I'm going to build savages. So I want a savage brand. So we were like all black. I'm like all black. We're going black. Elliot. It's going to be Elliot. And we're going to put sayings on the fucking back of these things like fucking savage shit. Right. And then that's all we're going to wear. We're going to wear these shirts everywhere. That's all we're going to fucking wear. That's our only wardrobe. No fucking suits. No nothing. That's it. We're going to be more comfortable too, anyways, to be honest. Yeah. But like that's going to be <laughs> our really brand though. And dude, listen, man, like everybody made fun. This guy's in a fucking t-shirt. I went out to dinner last night uh -huh. and everyone's all fancy and yeah. I'm wearing literally probably the same thing, just a different color. That's your brand, bro. <laughs> I just don't give a fuck. I but, just don't care. But at the end of the day, though, you fucking look good in what uh, you do. Yeah. And you know what? If you were really out of shape, I'm, I'm telling you, that shit wouldn't fly anymore. Probably, huh? No. You can <laughs> fucking wear it because you got the bicep veins. You're fucking in shape. Your shit's all fucking jacked. You're a savage. People know that your standards, you're, it's not your uniform. Your standards, you fucking walk in. It's moral authority. Like, I say this, like, moral authority. You walk in through a room, people are like... Even if I didn't know who you were, I'd be like, who the fuck's that guy? I don't know who you are. Just because of the muscles? You just fucking take care of yourself. I fucking respect you. I'm like, why do I respect that guy? Oh, he fucking takes care of himself. I'm pretty sure he probably keeps his fucking word. So like immediately my respect just goes to you. And I don't even know you yet. And, and, and so anyways, I'm trying to tell everybody that the world right now is like so thirsty for fucking leaders in the community, yeah. in the homes, in the business. So if you want to get rich, you got to increase your value. How do you increase your value? You become a leader because the greatest, scarcest resource in the world right now is leadership. And what is a leader? 
A leader is the fucking skill of influence. What is your opinion on the world right now? It's like this this political era and Dude, I don't watch politics. I mean, you have to tell her. No? Like, None? Dude, it's never been easier to mess. win. I think it's never been easier to win. I think I want to be a politician. It's, it's just they all suck. Yeah. I think I can do it. Dude, from what I see, it looks like it's a rigged game. So you, even if I learned uh, yeah. it, even if I learned it, I wouldn't be able to affect it. Um, so the the greatest thing that I can do is to build a great company for other companies to emulate and to just, you know, take good care of my family and my team and try to pour as much as I can into other people. And that's our ministry. That's our church. You know, I told you, I said, I asked you to believe in God and you said, yeah, you've probably changed more people's lives than a lot of churches, mm -hmm. which is weird. Very no, weird. No, it's actually cool because people go into church and they expect, right. For someone to deliver a message. Cause it's like deliver the message hour. Mm -hmm. You just, you just fucking deliver it all the time, man. Like I watch your content, all your content is like, like human excellence, changing your life, making good decisions. But it's standards. interesting. Cause like, I, I don't know when I look at it, it's like, but it's just me talking about things that I experienced. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is like, my experience with them. It's real though. But yeah, that's real. Like, dude, listen, you know, what's crazy. And I want to tell you this like this, and this is why it's super important for you to keep growing is because well, number one, if you don't keep growing, your, your fans will outgrow you and they'll go to someone else. Yeah, of course. Because they need you to keep growing. That's number one. I don't think that'll ever happen with you, but I want to say that the reason why you got to keep growing is because there's a lot of people watching you, man. And, and every time that you grow, they're fucking growing right there with you, man. Like, I'm willing to bet there's millions of people you've never met that are just running around that you've said something that changed all of their lives and like you just got to keep fucking dropping that. And you, so said, said, you said it's just an experience. And I'm like, bro, that experience, like walking around with a group of men in a brotherhood and doing life, like everybody wants that, dude. You love being with your fucking buddies and, and doing business with your friends or like, you know, like being real. It's just weird for me because like the way it all started, what it was never like, this is the thing I'm going to do. This is the thing that like, I, I didn't see people doing this thing, like at least in the social media space, because mm -hmm. it wasn't a space when I started. That's right. I was just doing stuff that was just what I was a trainer. I sold training. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know, I did all the sales bullshit, all yeah. the no's and overcoming them. And that's, yeah. that's what I did before any of this stuff. And then I was just posting content about my life. Mm -hmm. But I didn't, there was no like, you know how you said you watched me or so whoever else you watched on the internet was like, yeah. oh, I can, I can. It showed us a way to live. I didn't. There was none of it. It was just like I was just doing random shit, and then it, all of a sudden it became a thing that like people were like, well, this is really cool. You're cool. We like what you're saying. We like what you're doing. Yeah, because you you show us what's possible, bro. Do like people like don't know what's possible? Remember, you know, the four minute mile. Somebody did it. Everybody did it. It's like when you're going out there and you have fun and you're doing this. I'm like, why aren't I fucking having fun? Let's go do that. And plus your way of fun, like you have a good standard, you know, like you're not out fucking, you know, running around fucking doing, you know, like ruining people's lives. Like you're no. helping people, man. And the fact that you're in the gym, like you've genuinely have always cared about people changing. If you can change someone's body, you change their whole life. Of course. Yeah. You know, I mean, dude, when you change someone's body, I mean, they, they love themselves more. They give more people more love. I mean, they're fuckable, right? Finally, right? So other people like, you know, are attracted to them. Their kids look up to them. You know, what do you think young kids look up to? Superheroes, right? And maybe yeah. dad's a superhero. But now. this is why I think everything comes back to love. Everything we do. Yeah. To facts. feel love, to be able to share love, to be able to get it, whatever. Accept it. It all, it, it all comes back to that. Even the, yeah. the, the thing about money is like just another representation of, I want oh, people to love me. That's all it is. That's why humans yeah. do it. It's love. It's in, in, in a sense of intimacy with, yeah. a, with a woman. And then also in community, those yeah. are the two things that drive everyone. Yeah, that's like in that identify, like everything you just explained or like described about like the team and stems back to that. Always back to that. Obviously yeah. like the front end, the way you, which you're like presenting it or like driving people towards it or pushing people towards it is can change versus your, your, you know, your sort of method versus someone else's method. Yeah. But it always comes back to love. It always comes back to like, do I love myself enough that I could love others? That's right. And, and it's weird though, how we get it twisted where it's like, Oh, I got it, but I have to get money and things and then people will love me. Mm -hmm. But so when I was telling you that when I did all those things, there was no point like, yeah, I needed to make money and I knew that I needed to have money to like pay rent, but I never was like, oh, I'm going to do this to make money ever at any point in my life. And, and then I had the most money mm -hmm. yeah. and that's, I never focused it on works, it. And bro. I was just, all I was focused on was like trying to feel love. 
trying to feel love within myself and I'm not trying to cry like a bitch, uh, but trying to love myself. <laughs> yeah. Cause I, you know, the way I, the way my, my life was coming up was I was constantly questioning like, am I good enough? Am I worth it? Like, mm -hmm. you know, should I have these good things in my life because of, you know, my circumstances, I lost my father when I was real young. Um, and I was always kind of struggling with like, am I lovable? Mm. Sorry. <clears throat> Shit. <laughs> no, that's so, good. That's the side, but. But that's the side of you that we love, though. We love your savage side, mm -hmm. and we love that side. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because that that too it it's it's weird how it shifted and it's changed. Right. Because that that sort of savage side that came out of that also yeah it's very like I have to prove this. I have to show this. I'm gonna make sure that that. And it was never it was never money driven. Mm -hmm. And again, I go back to it. I got more than I could be grateful for. You know, mm -hmm. but. It's weird how that all came through that. But my my like intention didn't almost really shifted because before it was proving, I have to prove that I'm good enough. Mm -hmm. I have to prove that like I can be loved. And now it's like it's completely different now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a it's a way different experience for me now. It's weird. It's weird that having these conversations and just like talking about it is just still to this day gets me a little emotional because it's just like it's almost like I still haven't fully come to like close or turns with that. I don't know if I ever will, but I don't know. It's just weird, man. It's weird it when I have matters. these conversations. It does really matter. Yeah, but I, I want more people to understand that idea about love. And because to get the money, to have the success, to have the great relationship, like you have to love yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. And dude, that, and that stems back to your fitness. Dude, I really think the reason why you're a fitness freak, like why you'll always have to go to the gym, is because that's your medicine. Oh, I was, man. I mean, it's... Like that it'll would, always be your medicine. Yeah, I mean, that was the thing that like everything could, you know, sort of disappear because it was so caught up in like this idea of like, am I good enough? Why do people have this and I don't have that? And they have, uh, you know, their family looks like this, mine looks like that. And it, this weird pain I had in relationship to it all. And the gym was always just the thing that was like, okay, well, I could focus on this and all that goes away. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even so much so that like I could get big. It was just more yeah. like, oh, I can, I can like avoid all this sort of, thought that was negative like towards your me. your sacred place. Yeah. Yeah. And then it turned into all this shit. And then I, all, I, all I did for years was talk about my relationship to it, like how I'm talking about it now. Mm -hmm. But that's, it's like, it's weird because I, I don't want to say I didn't do anything special, but like in my mind when I was doing it, it wasn't special. It was just me sharing my life and what I, how I experienced it. That's why it's weird sometimes when I sit and I have these conversations and I talk about all this. I'm just like. We say it's weird, man, but people are, people are fucked up, dude. Listen, yeah. you got to realize like, like, people like lose their identity and like when you share your experiences and you share your stuff or you know you you may start crying or something like dude people like need to fucking see that shit because honestly at the end of the day like dude like you know we're in a weak ass generation right now and uh you know it's like you know being strong is also like you know i can cry with her or you know, I, I cried in front of my team the other day. You know, talking like about my see, son. I fucking people like to see shit, that man, I, vulnerability, but also you did something good with it. I think this world is so conditioned to just people feeling sorry for them and staying in a certain level that that's why they don't. You've done something with that, and that's why you need to share your experiences because you're changing somebody that can relate with loss, can relate with a lot of different things, and then that's what makes it so beautiful, and that's what makes people like really you know, chuck up because like, Hey, they're waiting for that change. Maybe still they're yeah. waiting to, yeah, and you got a good heart. Bro. With it. I would tell you your heart is what really makes you the most dangerous. Mm -hmm. You being fucking alpha masculine, but like super loving. It makes it so much better when you're a big freaking guy and you can Dude. get to that point and people are waiting for that. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. But it's just the no, whole world's good. thirsty for that, dude. And so I see a lot of guys trying to, I, I, I really think like what you've done to this point I think you're about to blow up again. And I think that there's like a re I was telling my wife, I think there's a recreation process that you're going to go through again. And I truly think like your purpose, like as being an influencer and you can open gyms and all these things and that's your business and there's things you'll do to make money. But I really think like you, your standard, like that's the greatest thing that you could do for this whole generation. I mean, for my team, us guys like us, you know, just, I mean, honestly, like fucking, like it's 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 time for you know Bradley Martin three point fucking oh yeah but it's it's the <laughs> you know truth. what I'm saying yeah it, it's yeah truth. like again yeah. and your girl's like what the fuck oh yeah but she comes with you too mm. and you know she gets her three and that's what we just did we just did that and our whole team 
you know, we wrote vision boards every year, what we're going after, man. And, uh, but that's what people see like Andy and they're like, Oh, he's like this, like he's so direct, all this other stuff. So you're seeing a different side of Andy. You're seeing that heart that he has. Just imagine how far you can go being that savage that you are oh, yeah. and sharing your heart. It's just, just makes it so much more relatable. And so, so awesome. That's what makes it last, which is really cool. Yeah. Why do you think there's like that weird, that weird stigma though, around like the alpha and like crying or like this sort of idea that oh if you do then you're not well i think those are the wrong people you know what i'm saying like i think anybody that thinks that way probably you know won't be in your life for very long anyways you know what i'm saying think about your good friends right now or anybody you look up to i those guys if you shed a tear in front of them they fucking love you more they love yeah. that shit anybody that if somebody's vulnerable or if they're trying to fucking you know play with their heart and they're like, dude, what the fuck's your problem? Dude, th nobody's going to follow those people. Or maybe nope. it's you telling yourself it's not okay. Yeah, that's true, dude. Uh, so so Tony Robbins, right? Um, I'm going back to like I started with him in you know 2019. There was yeah. this course I took, and it was Tony Robbins, Dean Graciosi, which was like his CEO. And Dean lives in Scottsdale. And I was like, dude, like this guy was like super smart. And I was like, dude, I, w I want this guy to coach me. And like me and this guy are like brothers now. He lives by us. Me and Jackie we go to dinner together with him and his wife. They're super cool. And we mentor his son. He's 15 years old. His daughter's boyfriend. He's 17. They come in. They do an internship all summer with us. And, and so, like, when he coaches me, he talks to me. And he's like, bro, he's like, I love your fucking craziness. I love it. I love how you <laughs> get in people's asses. But pause. he's like, if you want to go wide and you really want to go big, he's like, you need to shed. You need to shed a little bit of the old you. Okay. And he's Who like, is what the is old you that you're talking referring to? He's like, you just need to show your heart more. He's like, honestly, bro. He's mm -hmm. like, you, he goes, I, I sat down the first time we went to dinner with you and your wife and I thought you were going to be some maniac. And he's like, you're the most loving motherfucker I ever met. He's like, yeah. why can't everyone else see that guy? Yeah. And going back to what you just a lot said, of people that are I said, I just want everybody to love me. Mm -hmm. I just want them to believe I'm this way. I just want to do this. And I am that way. But also, dude, I'm like super fucking loving and super kind and like, like we're funny. And, you know, like sometimes I forget to show that, you know. So he was like, dude, 85%, the old you stays 15%. You need to wear your heart on your sleeve. And like that, what you did is exactly what I've been doing more. And dude, I'm telling you, we've been growing like crazy that's with really me who you being are, a little yeah. bit more loving, man. And God is love, right? So like. Like I can give them all the information, but if they don't feel that I love them, they're not going to want to change. And so, um, and I do love them. I do. I love everybody, dude. Like I'm a, the comeback kid. I know you watch like Patrick, but David shit. And you know, he's always talking about, do you operate from a state of madness? You know, are you, are you the motherfucker that wants to come back and, you know, shove it down everybody's throat? Like, who are you? And that's me. Like, I want to burn their fucking eyes out. Who's taught you the most in your life? Don't say her. Outside of her? Mm -hmm. I knew that would have been the answer. I just well, had to preface that. Well, I've learned from business, business, Patrick Bet David. Okay. But honestly, who do I watch a lot? I watch Andy Frizzell all the fucking time. I love Andy. I'm supposed to have him on the pod too. I just can't fucking quit watching his shit. I want to go I like punch Andy. somebody in the fucking face <laughs> every fucking time. And dude, his shit is so real. It's so on point, And it honestly resonates the most with me. And dude, I, I try to quit cussing and I, I'll go months without cussing. Like I'll quit. You'll go like three days without cussing. No, it feels like months. It just feels like it's way, a long yeah. time. Yeah. Three days. <laughs> three days is a long time. But, but, then, but then I'm like, I'm like, I feel like I need my edge. And then I'll like, I'll play like some Andy Frizzella something, you know. And then next thing, you know, I'm like, fuck you, man. I'm gonna fucking tear your face off. And I'm like, damn it. And I'm just like, fine, dude. I'm like, dude, listen, man, I'm me and and we're we're bringing a good thing to the world. Like I said I wasn't going to conform. I need to be me, and I do need to wear my heart on my sleeve. And like I said, dude, um, one of my greatest teachers, again with her, Andy Frazella, for sure. Um, you know, the fitness world, like I love what, what happened with COVID and like you fucking standing up with like, you know, like fuck everybody. Like, yeah, that was run. so bullshit. No, but that shit though, bullshit. but that, we did the same thing. Just so you're aware. Like Where though? That. We're in Oklahoma, yeah, right? Yeah, I did that bitch in California. I know. That's, yeah. that's, it. that's yeah, what I was about to say. Dude, yeah, this dude, is a whole we, different thing. We were in Oklahoma, right? And they, yeah. and they shut down all the businesses around us, which I know you went through the same thing. 
and there was no more than five people allowed in X amount of space. And we were having a hundred people come in at a time in a 700 square foot space. 780. 780 square feet, a hundred to 130 people. And I was doing these fucking events, getting up on fucking tables, telling them like, we're not. And dude, we would be on social media, not wearing masks. Yeah, Killing and everybody. And, and, and everybody's like, fucking killing everybody they're not wearing masks so and we would go live we would stream it live everywhere and we were like fuck masks and we would go crazy and watch that was there all were, you guys there would be people that be walking around outside in the sky one time he walked up with the briefcase and we we're like fuck they're gonna shut us down they're fucking here we'd have the blinds shut and we were in there just brainwashing oh, them and bro, shit i have so many stories man no i know i watched oh, your shit oh my god but we would have people duck down when the guys would come <laughs> <laughs> they would duck down behind the partition thing it didn't matter they knew everyone knew it was a, it was a it was an insane time like they literally like put a lock to like turn our lights off and the craziest part about that like with the city so they send people like every day right and then it got to a point where they just, they were, I don't know if they were just like, all right, fuck this. Or I kept going to court. And so like nothing was changing, but when it was kind of like all said and done, this is the thing that really to this day is like kind of irks me. They put locks on the lights. So like, you, you know, they, they could turn it off and then put a lock. You had to like cut this big ass lock to turn it back on. Mm -hmm. So for about two months, we just operated off of like generators and like gasoline and like just mm. construction lights and like random, like, uh, you know, pop-up speakers and stuff. And this was like middle summer, like it would have been around this time. It was, it was like the craziest time, tons of people in there, but I'll still, I'll still never forget this. And just it, to this day, it kind of like irks me. Hey there sales warriors. Are you tired of facing objections left and right, struggling to close deals and watching your competitors snatch away your prospects? Well, you're not alone. Recent surveys indicate that a whopping 72% of sales professionals struggle with handling objections, leading to missed opportunities and lost revenue. But fear not, there's a solution to this all too common problem. Enter Andy Elliott's Sales Playbook, your ultimate guide to mastering sales strategies and objection handling like a pro. Andy Elliott's Sales Playbook isn't just a collection of tips and tricks, it's a comprehensive roadmap to success packed with actionable insights and real world examples that you can start implementing right away. And here's the best part. Andy's playbook isn't just for seasoned sales veterans. Whether you're a rookie looking to kickstart your career or a seasoned pro aiming to sharpen your skills, there's something for everyone in this playbook. So if you're ready to arm yourself with the knowledge and confidence you need to crush objections, close more deals, and skyrocket your sales career, don't hesitate. Click the link below to grab your copy of Andy Elliott's Sales Playbook today. Remember, success favors the prepared. Equip yourself with the tools you need to outshine the competition and become a sales powerhouse. The time to elevate your game is now. Now let's make this your best year yet. Now let's get back to the video. They were like, yeah, so if you do these certain things, like we can like have you be open. You got to have masks. You got to have these stickers on the floor with this six feet bullshit, all this nonsense shit. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I'm doing all these things. And I was like trying to like police some of these things, like trying to do some of them to, so that I could say, hey, come check. We're good to turn our lights back on because we were operating for like two months. It cost me like 20,000 a month just in gasoline to like keep just aside from the rent, aside from everything else, like mm -hmm. just for gasoline because mm -hmm. yeah. um, it's running all day. So I, I'm trying to go back and forth with them to be like, yo, like turn my, like, let me, let me turn these lights back on basically in this like room to this day. They've never responded to that email. And I, and so the lights got back on and the only way the lights got back on is cause I went in there and cut the lock myself. So imagine just how fucking bullshit it was that like nothing was ever done about it. Mm. They dismissed the whole thing. Obviously I had to spend money on lawyers and deal with the whole thing, but it was just kind of like, all right, see ya. After like, eight, nine months of like me having to come in at fucking every other month to talk to someone saying like, your gym's supposed to be closed. I'm like, I know, tell me why. And no, there was never an answer. That's so. And crazy. I would talk to the health people and I'd be like, well, explain to me why like Best Buy and Costco and all shit's tons of fucking people in there right down the street. Explain to me why they could film porn indoors anywhere in the Valley in the same exact County, but the gym can't be open. Explain to me why like the fucking you can get alcohol and tobacco and all this shit is actually really bad for your cardiovascular system, but you can't do the thing that's good for your cardiovascular system, like going to the gym. And that's the, the main proponent of like killing people in relationship to COVID. Mm. And, and they were just like, oh, we, we, got, we, we got to talk to someone. And, and then they're like, I'm like, well, what about the airports? And you guys aren't even policing the airports. Like you can go to the airport all good. You got to wear a mask and a plane, but you can sit side by side, right? There's no distance, no yeah. six feet, but here it's got to be six feet. 
there was never a good explanation. That's why I was just like, this is all bullshit. You're yeah. fucking finessing us. And the guy even told me, he goes, oh, well, that's not in my jurisdiction. This is public. That's federal. That's So it's like in federal, does, just, does fucking COVID just decide not to spread? <laughs> no, that's it's because it's tons of money. It's big business. And you're mm -hmm. just fucking shitting on little people and you're fucking closing his gap. That's crazy. And it was just like, it was insane though. It was also insane just to watch how crazy people were about masks and like, I'll never forget the craziest thing I've ever seen is someone in a car by themselves with a mask on, not an Uber driver. We saw one today. We saw That's one today. The and I'm California. like, I'm like, is this per like this? You know, when they talk about joke about like NPCs and shit. I'm like, is this person like a? Do they have their own thought? There's no, there's no way that makes sense in your own vehicle. It's the craziest shit. Yeah. And then the crazier part was the masks themselves. It was like nine times out of ten, someone wore the same mask for how long? Right, a week. I don't know. Maybe they got a mask and it was like they wore it for a month. You take the mask off, you put it down, you take, you're collecting the fucking germs anyways and sticking them on your face. It was the craziest shit that I was like, none of this makes sense. I'm not doing this. This yeah. is not right. I'll literally cut these fucking doors off if I have to. I'm not going to stop people from going to the gym because I knew how important that was besides just the COVID thing, like just in my life, how important the gym was for me yeah. and what saved me. And it's yeah. like, why would I like, I, there's probably kids I knew because I had tons of people coming to that gym from all over the valley who couldn't go to yeah. other gyms yeah like i'm not gonna fucking close this down just because i'm getting harassed by the fucking state whatever bullshit it was just it was one of the craziest times ever i'll never forget that and i'll, I'll just it just it's a little sad because it's like damn are people just this fucking weak mm -hmm. people just don't believe so much in what they actually believe and they just go they said it i read it here i saw it there it's bad let me hide the news and then it's just like and then all the other things that came along with that that caused just like just fucked up learning for kids you're not going to school like they're not in they're not in you know don't be around anyone it's like remove community you're removing all these things that actually matter mm -hmm. and it's going to cause so many more problems everyone goes none of that matters we only got to focus on these old people who are probably going to die anyway of fucking the flu anyways it's like i i couldn't fucking believe it i couldn't believe it and i understood that COVID was a real thing and it was a thing that actually killed people and people who are like predisposed and they already had pre-existing conditions for the most part. But it's like, how are we sacrificing now everything for this thing? And it was just like the biggest thing to tell, the biggest tell of that whole thing was this is a for-profit business making mm. fucking trillions of dollars and we're getting this free thing that in reality, they're just taking our money and giving it to a fucking for-profit business that just made trillions of dollars and mm -hmm. all these companies like 3M making fucking tons and tons oh, and tons yeah. of money because they're selling masks. Yeah. That's what it was. It wasn't That's about crazy. fucking protecting people. It's fucking crazy. I could not fucking believe it. It was the craziest fucking thing that I ever, and I, I just, it's sad. It's really sad. And well, then, so when I talk about all that stuff and it gets me fired up because I'm like, I really lived this and I really experienced it. It's just like, I don't know what the point was other than money. And then I'm like, yeah, it was all money. So then I go like, so you, you imagine now you have these people, richest people in the world, like the real 1%, 0.5%. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. What is enough? Like what is enough of control of money of power? I don't understand that. Cause I understand like, yeah, I want to make money and yeah, I want to live a great life and I want to be able to take care of my family and like my loved ones. And I'd love to have cool shit and, waste it money every once in a while I'll go gambling because it's fun but it's like th those people in those companies and wh whoever is in charge of the world is like they have everything like why like what was the fucking point of that that's right i'll never understand that yeah well i think number one you, you'll you'll end up going down in the history books remember history's wrote after something passes so it wouldn't surprise me if 15 years from now they're talking about you in a history book i don't know yeah i, I don't so. know about me no, it'll, yeah. be, it'll be the crazy that motherfucker, crazy motherfucker, guy crazy motherfucker that had the gym. No, yeah. I mean, because that's how history is made. You know, like history was made with all those masks, all that shit. But the people that rebelled are the people that are making the big di biggest differences now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, and then now you're just, you know, like you create your own economy. You create your own reality. You know, like nothing fucking controls you anymore. After going through that shit. Like now you're most qualified because you had to make that stand through that to just help anybody. You're like ultra fucking qualified. It's weird, dude. Yeah, it's, it's a really cool. weird it's, life. It's cool shit. It's a really cool time to be alive, man. Yeah, it is. It, it for sure. It's definitely like it's both though. It's really cool. It's really bad at the same time. It depends on your intentions. 
Yeah. Does it though? Because I think I think like even if you have all the best intentions, like there's still so much set up that's like not that you'll lose or you won't succeed, but it's just there's so much bullshit. Yeah, there's so much bullshit. Your intentions paired with hard work, and then you'll make a difference. Like so, here's a question. This is like a like a hundred year question. Two two hundred year. I don't know. Five hundred year. Do you think that it's ever gonna be? different like do you think it's ever going to change meaning like control power right let's say all the people who are our age or whatever they're like they're oh this is weird this is bad why did we do this that shouldn't have happened me included right mm -hmm. you think then those people get to a point where then they're kind of like in control or in more power and they just kind of start to do the same thing like how did it get there like how did humans get to the point where they're like it's never enough i need everything i want a hundred trillion dollars like well, you see what I'm saying? With social media now, it's getting pretty fucking crazy. Yeah. Because like success, there's a lot of really fake success on social media. But also, and, it's, and, it's, and, and it, the way to get there. I just think human nature is so fucked that it's never enough. No, it isn't ever enough. But it's also like you know, you're talking about are people going to stay thinking a certain way? It's like a lot of people are like ragging on millennials, and shit. Most of our team is millennial now, right? Like they don't work hard. They're expecting, you know, they, they're they just not used to putting, yeah, they're taught different. They want to feel significance. They're not driven by money. They're very driven by purpose. Mm -hmm. So we decide to do things different. So you get a bunch of people that are high powered that think differently together. We always talk about, hey, what if we had Andrew Frisella? What if we had, you know, Tony Robbins? What if we had Bradley? What if we had us? What if we had all these big influence? What if we had you in our building and we made a lot of noise? We can make a difference. We can make a difference if we all stick together yeah. And share the same the message. New, are, are the you know, new everybody news. wanted to be president when we were kids, right? Well, I'm going to be the next president. None of our kids freaking want to be presidents. They all want to be an influence. They want to make a difference. They want to change people's lives. And that's what the young generations are looking at. The thing is that most people are criticizing and they're not willing to stand up and fight and they're not willing to put in that hard work. And that's, that's where you that's make why, That's why I think, dude, seriously, when I told you like, like Bradley 3.0, like that motherfucker, like becoming an influencer, like you're one. But like, you need to go fucking 20 times harder, bro. How and, do you think? Well, just go harder. Just like, there's like more versions of you. In whenever you feel comfortable, your fitness, you have to fight it. You know, whenever and, you believe, you, you're yeah, very opinionated. And, and the when reason you believe why in something, is because you got all these it. millions of kids that are watching you. And like, either you're going to change them or they're going to fucking fall prey to someone else. And dude, they're all, they wake up on their screen. They go to bed on their screen. They are on their screen at work. They're on the screen when they're on a date. They're on their screen when they're driving in their car. But that's the crazy part, right? Because you talk about influencers now being like, that's the new news. So the thing that I was speaking to earlier was that like, then you have just now humans who are now getting more power and control. It's not not as much here, even though this is always kind of here. Yeah. Right. It's like the, the fucking, who are yeah. these fucking trillionaires in a room yeah. somewhere who are all like, let's fuck the world up. This is crazy. This is yeah. cool. Let's see if we can do that. That's what it feels like. Genuinely. I wouldn't be surprised if there's like the richest people in the world are like, oh, let's see how far we can push them. Just because almost at this point, because like how much is enough? Yeah. My thought is like, so now you have these influencers who are like me or other people doing stuff. And it's like, how do you keep the intentions true? Because like someone though, let someone else somewhere else talking about something is like, yeah, they could say something that sounds good and sounds worthy and sounds like empowering, but it's like, are they just doing that so they make money? No. Well, we're, well, I, I said, there's a certain point. You already got a nice house. You got nice businesses. You got a couple cool cars. We got everything you need. So now it's like a sniper kill count. It's like, how many lives can I change? So and not, I'm not talking about me personally. Oh yeah. No, I mean, okay. I'm a part of this mix, but I'm saying like, there's now 10,000 other influencers say over the next five years to get really popular and they have this voice. How do we, I mean, you can't, right? Like you're not going to keep everyone being like for the good and no. not just for the good of self. Yeah. Well, I think those people don't last very long. They fade out. You know, when I got in in 2019, I mean, the guys that were there, there's only a couple of them and they're your buddies now and they're still around. But all the others are gone. Every year you see a new guy pop up and fade out. Yeah. And so like the only way I think you don't fade out is to have those good intentions. Mm -hmm. I, the market ain't going to let a loser fucking stay around. You know. You truly believe that. Yeah. Yeah. And plus another deal I believe is I believe you won't let him stay around. You may say, what does that mean? Well, I believe Andy Frazella, Patrick but David, Ed Milet, you know, you, David Goggins, Joe Rogan, Dana White, all these fucking I believe those guys, they fucking decide who stays in and who stays out. 
Those guys can back people or not back them. Those they don't guys have to aren't all thinking be buddies, of retiring soon either. But they, they fucking will, you know, you can talk to Patrick and be like, what do you think about Andy Elliott? And he'll be like, well, I fucking like him. I like what the guy stands for. Or he'll be like, I don't know. I don't like the guy. Well, dude, listen, if they don't like you, you're not going to fucking make it. They'll tell a couple people somewhere behind the deal and you're fucking gone. You'll eventually fade out. And that's why I think that like, you know, it's just, it's going to work itself out. It always will. It's yeah. a very special time to be alive and stay real. That's why when I was telling my team and my wife, I said, I said, coming to meet you, I was like, this motherfucker is about to go to another level. I mean, not, I not, not in views and stats and all that, but I mean, like in your personal life, I think you are. I think, I think it's time again. Um, it's time again for me. You know, like it's time again for me. It's time again for my team. It's time again for her. Um, I was telling her, I was like, it's fucking time. Like we need to go fucking harder, man. You know, we need to go harder, but we need to take our families with us, our children, our teams. We need to go fucking psycho. And I was like, you know, I think you're about to do that. I feel it. Yeah. I, I fucking see it. Look at him. He's fucking, you can see that shit. Well, he's smiling itching. now. He wasn't smiling in the yeah, beginning. Yeah, see, he fucking, he's sick in the head. He likes that shit. So, yeah, I'm definitely a sick fuck, dude. I know, I love sure. it. It's not dude, good. that's why we flew out here, man. That's yeah. why I said, you said, how often are you in LA? And I was like, really never. I mean, we don't ever come to LA. But then I was like, fuck it, we're coming out here. Why do you avoid LA? No, just, you know, like anytime we've ever been to California. I mean, I'll be honest, it's kind of sucking. Well, <laughs> it's, like it's not well, the best. Anytime we've ever been out to California. <laughs> it is our job. This is a mission of ours. Every person we encounter to make them smile because they have a problem smiling. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Like, yes. But we I smile feel, a lot. I feel like I smile no, a lot. No, you do smile a lot. But yeah. like, I understand. Like, I'm, I'm a No, I'm talking person. about like running into people at the store or yeah. whatever. Smile, motherfucker. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. Well, and, and dude, I'm telling you, like, uh, California. I'm going to start doing that to people on the street. Yeah. You should. They would because you're a big guy. They probably yeah. would smile. You're the <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> yes. Yeah. But they'll love that shit. But, but California is one of the most beautiful places on the fucking oh, earth. Oh, my God. It's amazing. Most beautiful weather. Um, but just the politics here, you know, yeah, and then like, like just fucking people don't smile enough sometimes. You know what I mean? It's like, and I look, okay. So in Scottsdale, everybody's like, Hey, it's like everybody you walk by. It's like entrepreneur fucking capital. I was Every, just talking to someone about this last night. Everybody fucking Scottsdale. loves each other. Bro. I love it here. Yes. Yeah. Dude, yeah. when you walk into Scottsdale, everybody's like, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? And everybody's it's not like, from there. It's a good hub. of Yes. People. Everybody loves everybody. So. Anytime that I've came to California, it seems like everybody's kind of like, you know, yeah. it's like, what's up? And they're like, do, you, do I fucking I was you? born in California. And, like, and I look at people okay. and I smile like, do it's I like, know you? So Why I just you don't come here a lot. Like, but never mind. But we wanted to come down here and meet you. That was super important, man. And, you know, my whole team, I, I have like 100 guys that are there. I grabbed 10. I was like, I was like, let's go meet Bradley. You know, like, That's I cool. want you guys to meet. I appreciate it. Me. Yeah, dude. And you, you, you have something cool going on, man. You're, 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 uh, everybody loves you weird it's yeah. i feel like i feel like a and, lot of people the, hate me too though well the people that fucking hate you are fucking just losers so yeah. like we don't care i mean and by the maybe way maybe you should wear shorter shorts yeah i'm sure he's got some fucking short ass <laughs> wait a shorts. sec yeah i'm pretty sure he's got some short ass shorts he's a gym rat hun. That, sure. <laughs> that just reminded oh god that just reminded me of my buddy uh ethan he, he just talking shit about guys with short shorts are like the alpha guys and i always had short shorts on see i told you he's got fucking well shorts. you didn't you never saw that clip huh you never saw that you don't know what i'm no. talking about at all that's no. what makes it so funny yeah <laughs> it's just no we'll but up. everybody's always ragging i always shorts. wear short shorts dude and i I'm got like, and i'm like dude just because you motherfuckers got small ass our cleaning lady legs. puts her his shorts in my drawers yeah but I'm like, dude, you skip leg day, so you don't want to wear short shorts. I get it, dude. It's hard, exactly. They're, yeah, they're afraid you, of the hard. Yeah, but if you hit your fucking legs, you want to get that shit out there. And you're like, because, no, like, I want to fucking... I, this by episode, the way, I love you guys shorts. both have to pose with your shortest no, shorts. No, to be honest, like, it actually is, I really like, unironically, one of the craziest things that identifies everything you said as a whole is wearing shorts. I swear to God, it sounds crazy. But picture this, like... <laughs> it is the hardest muscle for most people to like grow. Yeah. It's it's the most painful. Yes. It hurts the most when you do it. It's the most uncomfortable. It hurts for days if you do it good. And you, you're able to like actually build something that's really hard. Yeah. And show it's funny. I like burning their fucking eyes out. It's funny. I like calves. I like, I like having fucking muscles that other guys Now I'm going to start judging people if they wear shorts or not. I'm be like, they only wear pants. See this guy. This guy's got shorts. This guy's got pants on, dude. Slightly pussy. Yeah. <laughs> Slightly pussy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, hey. And, and he, there we uh, go. Uh, Let's go. Yeah. Oh, you got good legs. Yeah, he's got, he yeah, just decided uh, to wear pants. But, 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 
but Besides. always a savage. All my guys are fucking Jack, bro. That was sick. Drop trowel right away. Oh, yeah, he didn't lit. care. He didn't care. That <laughs> motherfucker don't play, dude. I like that, dude. Ollie, take your shirt off. No, I love look, that. No, but look, all these he guys, looks like a gym, bro. No, in the meetings though, in the meetings, I make them take their fucking shirts off, bro. Like these guys, like, and and by the way, like all these guys, every day, they literally in our meetings, we take our shirts off. And they fucking have to be in shape, bro, because that's what we we are. We're a standard for other fucking people. So all my coaches, they they got to be in good shape. He's like, I didn't get a pump. Oh, yeah. Ain't he, he shaved? I know you shaved because I know you're hairy. Yeah. I can tell your hair is like, <laughs> I know. That took a while. <laughs> wow. I need a laser. But but all my guys, man, I mean, he dude, he's married. How many kids you got? Three, one on the way? Yeah, three, one on the way. I mean, Fuck he's a yeah. dad, 32 years old. You know, he's a fucking killer, bro. Like, yeah, fucking kids, man. Yeah, no, dude. I mean, it's just been hard. It's hard. For, it's hard for me to identify like people in my in my life for like the right reasons. That's the hardest thing for me. That's what I. I mean, even in business and all that kind of shit, I struggle with that because I think like I don't know if there's something in relationship to the social media aspect of things and maybe people perception like perception of like this is easy. And then like they're around and then like they almost like expect their life to be more easy when it's like, that's not how any of this started. That's not how I got any of this. Mm -hmm. right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I tend to find people that like, I don't know if it's, if I'm bringing it into my own life because of the, the fear of abandonment or like that whole issue that I have relationship to trauma. And it's like, I'm, I'm avoiding the good ones and bringing in the bad ones. Yeah. It's a weird thing. Yeah, bro. You just need to get close to us, bro. We need to have you fly out to Scottsdale. I mean it. And just come see the team. Come see, like, just one day. Like, just come out. Like, and I know everybody's busy. But I'm telling you, bro, like, everything. So ask her, like, my biggest fear. Me and you are very similar. Very, very similar. And um, you may say it sounds different, but it's, it's the exact same person. I have, I have massive fear of abandonment. Like, massive fear. Like, the one okay. thing that I know with her is that she will never leave me. You know? And, and then I know I would never do anything to hurt her. Like, so like, there's this like equal and we're building this in our company where like, like I have a whole team. Like I told you, like, like we're all together till we die. Like people are like, okay, well, like what's next? Like, we're all going to be together till we die. Like, what, what do you mean? But do you think you could, it's like, you can't guarantee that though. Yeah, I can. We are, we can. What do you guys think? Oh, yeah. But how though? How, how do you? It's different, man. I mean, it's, it's all mindset. It really, you know, the way you absorb the information and how you how you deal with it. Yeah, but you have to see it. This, people tell us, hey, you don't, you can't mix business and family because we, through pain, we built our one. we built our business to be like a family. And people are like, oh, you can't do that. You can't talk about things to your employees. You can't do this. You can't do that. And I'm like, dude, screw this shit. I mean, if I if we get hurt, that means we have a heart. I mean, that's just it. And I'm not going to change. And I'm not going to give, like he said, I'm not going to give this person, I'm not going to be a certain way with Jacob Hagerman because this asshole didn't know how to take advantage of the opportunity or be that way. Let him live with that, not me. And it's not okay for him. You know, so that's that's how we live and that's how that's how we are. Being hurt sometimes needs to happen. Actually, all of the times that you've grown in life have been through that pain. Yeah, you become the fact. person that you are because of that pain. And sometimes we need to get hurt in order to grow to that next level and share with somebody else or mentor somebody else that really needs it. It's, it's just crazy. Cause like, I know, like, I know that a hundred percent to be true, but it's like, it could happen so many times. You're like, motherfucker. Like yeah. the question though, is it then goes back to like, what the fuck am I doing wrong? Right. That is still bringing this. Yes. Yeah. It's a growth. It's a growth thing. It's all a blessing. Getting hurt is a blessing as well. You know, that's just it. Sometimes we try to protect ourselves from being hurt and it's time to get hurt 
it's time to get hurt. It's all very intentional. You know, we've been through some very difficult things just recently. And I'm like, man, that's just making me more battle tested for the next freaking thing that I need to do. The next thing that I need to teach our kids or our team or, or something like that. And it's just like, we try so hard and we fall into this bubble of like, hey, well, I'm not going to do this because I'm afraid of being hurt. And it's just like you're holding yourself back from becoming who you need to become. Yeah. I mean, I know that. That's The, the, the difficult thing is I know that to be true. Mm -hmm. I'm very aware. Yeah. But it still happens. Right. And I still do that. It's a defense mechanism. Yeah. That's the thing I need to just fucking... Yeah. yeah. And, and sometimes, look, I, like Jackie asked at the beginning of this year, and I said the same thing last year. She's like, what do we need for this year? And I was like, I just need another good man in my life. Another one or two strong fucking men. That's what I need. It's an alliance. Yeah, I need an alliance. Like I, 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 this year I prayed just, I, my, I need another savage in my group. You know, um, two years ago, you know, three years ago, you know, when, when we kind of got with Rob Bailey, when he was, you know, kind of a down, and then we fucking shot him back up. You know, I mean, like. Well, we all like, go through like, times I wanted where Rob, we're in. I wanted, I wanted Rob to be in us. And when Rob came out, first time Rob was with us, I mean, he fucking started shedding tears. You know, because his fucking whole team betrayed him. You know, I mean, remember him and Hustle used to make music? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they split. Well, now they just made that Heart of a Champion song. If you listen to that new song, they just made Heart of a Champion. And they just, they're recording another song right now in the, in the studio. So I like, I like, no, like, when your team betrays you or something happens or there's breakups and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But, bro, like, you got to get adversity. around fucking people that are, we are fire-breathing fucking dragons, dude. Like, we're, we're crazy. Like, our company, our team, like, dude, when I say hero-making machine, like, we're on fire, man. Like, we're brainwashed. Like, brainwashed. <laughs> like, fucking totally sold to the fact that life will be whatever we want. Yeah. And no matter who tells us that it's going to be different, fuck you. And, and we're teaching people this. And they're fucking winning big. And, like, so, like, we're always looking for the brotherhood. So, like, you definitely need to come out to Scottsdale. And yeah, you, see to, you see to see. Because ask Patrick. Patrick Bed Davis was just out with us last weekend. Mm -hmm. And he was, he's mind-fucked. Text him and go, hey, what would you think about going out to Andy's place? I'll do that. He's like, fuck. Bro, <laughs> I mean, he's like, you guys are like the fucking CIA. Like the fucking, <laughs> like, it was like, he's like, there was fucking, pe like, he's like, he just said, dude, it was fucking crazy, man. Like, crazy. He's I'll like, come like, out. I'll come out. When, when can we set that up? Yeah, we'll set it up as soon as we're done. Okay. I swear to God, just when you come out. I'll give you 10 million cash if I can't change your life in fucking two hours. <laughs> Swear cool. to God. Look, I'll dude, take you on that. Yeah, I, I pay out money all the time, don't I? Yes. Not I, don't, million, I, don't, I don't need the money. I don't need the money. I, I, just, no. I believe it. <laughs> no, but like... How do you explain that when you go back home? How do you explain what did I just look like? Yeah, and our company has built this thing. So, like, so, we, so we have a 70,000 square foot building, um, gym in the middle. Uh, like I said, 500 people can be downstairs, sales floors upstairs, Everybody's all day long. Hunter guys, doo, 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 doo. fucking kids, dude. Most of our guys are running out their shirts off all day long, fucking making calls. Like it's a straight boiler room, bro. And no shoes. Yeah, no fucking shoes. Running around and and look and, and dude, companies are flying shoes. in all day long to watch how our company operates, dude. Because like we're insane. Like we're and we break records and we're all in unity and there's no fucking Judases in our building. Like everybody's on the same page. God first, core values on every wall. Rob Bailey, fucking music playing all day long. <laughs> Dude, we're I'm building. Coming. Dude, we're building a, a 2,000, 2,500 person. It's called the Elliott Army Event Center on the corner in front of our building right now. We're building four buildings, and one of them will hold 2,500 people. So every month, instead of having you know 500 people at a time, we have 2,500 people at a time. And dude, like those chairs, those chairs, every one of those chairs, before we have our meetings, we sell out of our events. We tell them whoever comes and sits in that fucking chair, swear to God, they're coming in one way, they're leaving another. We hijack their fucking brains, man. Every one of them. And dude, all we do is brainwash them for human excellence. That's it. You know, we bring them in like, oh, we're going to teach you to fucking sell and close. And what we do is we, re we recreate them right there. And we teach them to use pain as power. I teach them how I go into the dark side and like use the dark side, but also like very charismatic, you know, and, and like making relationships and fucking talking to people like I've known them my whole life. We speak with full familiarity with everybody we talk to. Anybody that we run into will talk to you like we've known you your whole life. Like nobody feels weird around us. It's impossible for someone to feel weird around us. And depending on who it is, like people are like, oh, I wouldn't react that way if I was in front of him. Well, dude, I would read you and be different. Like 
you know, like what what you see here isn't who I am when I'm talking to someone, you know, like if you're different, I'm different. Like I'm just, I know who I need to be to get you to move. And, um, and dude, we just love it, man. Like we've lived for one thing and it's purpose and it's truly a ministry. You believe in God, of course. all the hurt you've been through, all the pain, all the suffering. Dude, 95% of the world is hurt. So like this next 3.0, Bradley Martin, dude, this motherfucker is going to change millions of lives, bro. Yeah, I'm like, not even joking. Sounds like I need to open a gym in Scottsdale. That's what dude, you like. do. Yeah. We would fucking rock that bitch, yes. bro. Yes, Everyone, sure. everywhere. Dude. Dude, Scott said, we walked, I walk into the mall, 300 people run up. Oh my God, you changed my life. You're going crazy. You're doing this. Dude, I keep telling her we need to fucking open a gym, but we, that's not our deal. If there was a gym that you could funnel all these motherfuckers in. Scott, it would go crazy. Dude, it know. would be fucking crazy, bro. Yeah. And you know what I love about Scottsdale is everybody's got money. Because yeah. yeah, everybody's, like, everybody's in entrepreneurship. I mean, yeah. you could charge, you could charge $4.99 for a gym pass and that ain't fucking nothing, dude. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. But no, but like, <laughs> no, but for the environment, the no, place, get the fucking, you know, um, you know, like, like you have your brand in there, yeah. like, like, and it would be like, this is our identity. This is who we are. Like, if you're like me, this is where you fucking lift. Yeah. And then dude, like that fucking bitch would be, you'd have to turn everyone down because it'd be sold out. Like it'd be done. You got to go check out my actual gym now. I feel like you yeah. went to We're LA. excited, dude. You went to LA Fitness. That sucks. I know. Well, Sorry. That did well, suck. We, Fuck. When we came in, you know, it was our first time coming in. I didn't want to fucking, you know, like wear you out before we got here. So yeah. we wanted to come meet you, you know? And so like, I wanted my team. I'm like, you know, let's, you know, like from what we see online, I was like, dude, this guy's just like us, you know? So. What? In your perspective of me online, what am I in like real life? You're ultra direct. You're uh, super fucking like, you don't care what people think about you, but like you're teaching people standards really in everything you do. And, and you have fun, man. I think that's a big key component. And I love that you can do it in California. Yeah. Oh, that's, <laughs> a, that's a big one. But what about Ali? What were you saying? See, like, why is that oh, a thing? I'm, 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 I'm yeah, you. And I think that's what Andy said. Like, just you got to be yourself. I think, I mean, I didn't like you a lot. Like, I, mean, I, you, I, <laughs> I you, love you. this. No, I'm being serious. I've been watching <laughs> you for five years, dude. Like, I've been watching you yeah. for a long time. And I love what you fucking do. Like, especially, you know, at the beginning. And I think lately, maybe you've been, maybe you're on the wrong people. Maybe, I mean, maybe you've been hurt. Uh, but I feel like, dude, in person, you're just like, the fact that you're able to be vulnerable and you just be able to just be honest with yourself and this conversation, like, I love you, dude. But, you, but I feel and, and maybe that's why you need to just be more direct and more open, you know, to, to, to talking about your story and be more intentional because you don't realize the, the I, I think you're underestimating the power that you have. I think you're underestimating the amount of empathy. It happens to a lot of people. The world, with the following that you have, with, the, with the, 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 the viewership, and also maybe, man, maybe your audience have, you know, have grown and you're still sending, it's the same message that you're sending because, you know, I, I see the people you hang around with. Uh, or based on the YouTube videos and stuff like that, it's like you're, in my opinion, you're better than that. Like, I, I, I mean, interesting. Over the course of this podcast, I'm like, dude, I like this guy. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. funny. Yeah. Well, he's smiling so much more. It's just funny yeah. to hear it. I just love hearing I, it. I just, it's yeah. good to hear people give yeah. feedback. Yeah. They say never meet your heroes because you're going to get let down. That's what happens a lot. So. Damn. Mm. I feel like we got to work out. That's dude, what I need to go do today. Fucking ripped, I'm going to go to jacked. the gym today. Yeah. That's what I have to go do now. Well, 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 the biggest thing is just like being here, meeting you, man. Yeah. I mean, it like we, uh, when have we flown out and done a podcast with anybody? Never? <laughs> yeah. Or no, no, I'm not at, being weird. If we're like, in a city and they, you know, we go intentionally do something else. And then yeah. We do a podcast. Yeah. Like I, I, we haven't ever done it. Like, yeah. honestly, like, but, but so like, so coming out and flying out here, like, you know, God dot, he lines the dots. Right. And you know, people have like revelations, you know what I mean? Like where you're like, I need to do this. I don't fucking know why, but I just know when I'm like, I need to do this. I need to do it. And I was just sitting there and I'd message you or you'd message me or something a long time ago Maybe I sent a video. I was like, yeah, we'll come out. And you're like, if you're ever in LA, hit me up. And I'm like, well, I'm never in LA because we're never here. Like we never come here. We did an event here three years ago and that was it. And then since then we have never come back and, or whatever it was, but it seems like fucking three years ago. But anyways, my idea of it is I was like, oh, well one day we'll run into each other. And then I don't know why out of the blue, I was like, Hey bro. I was like, when can I come out to LA? Because I was like, I need to just fly out. 
Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. Like, we've never gone. Yeah. And then... Yeah, it was a couple year ago or something. But I just, but then I just messaged ten of my guys, and I just said, "Hey, man, we're gonna take a road trip. We're gonna go to L.A. Let's go shoot this podcast. Let's go meet Bradley Martin, and uh, let's just, you know, let's and just it's go not fucking." Hang because out. we didn't have and, anything to do. Yeah, we hadn't had a day. Of Dude, we hadn't had a fucking day off in fucking in, a year. Yeah, we have like we had an event. We've been doing events every fucking day. Every day we have something to do so yeah but i told my wife i'm like you see this fucking guy we're gonna go fucking meet this guy <laughs> yeah. and dude like i don't understand why but dude we're fucking crazy so you said i don't know i need to hang out with the right people this that i think i got a hundred of the right fucking guys that are right there in scottsdale and then we'll plan it where you come on our deal now yeah i'll check out right and yeah and, dude, and if you want to build a gym i'll help you do some scouting places i'm doing we'll, that stuff you, you'll fill the bitch overnight we need yeah we but, need 20 to thirty thousand square feet that's we will that. fill the bitch overnight with you. We would love to fucking we have, have you in the our audience, backyard. the clientele, the people that will come in every day. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, my my point is, we just wanted we we just wanted to meet you, and you're fucking awesome. You're just like us, you know. Um, you know, hurt people either hurt people or they turn their wounds into their weapons, and they fucking change people's lives. And like, uh, and like, I I've seen you change a lot of people's lives. We've watched you. You know, people will either do one of two things. They'll watch you for entertainment or they'll watch you for value. I think because you're very entertaining, you're the crazy guy, but also you have so much fucking value. When he was saying, telling your stories, if you drop entertainment and value, I mean, you're the next, I mean, you're a business guy. I mean, you're a sales guy. I mean, you're a fitness guy. I mean, you're in a relationship. I mean, it's weird because I'm just a fucking random dude. (laughs) See, but that's the problem. You're not a random dude. You're not better. Th- you're not better than anyone else. You're somebody that actually fucking stood up for themselves, and most people don't. You took action. Yeah, like when you stood up for yourself, it gave us courage to stand up for us. So, like, I'm just saying. Imagine if you went harder. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, we're grateful to be down here. I'm, we appreciate. I'm, I'm it. really grateful. I'm you know, grateful you guys came for real. I, yeah. I really appreciate you guys' you know. time. Actually, everyone here. For sure. Thank you. Yeah, we fun. need to have meet the whole team. We're gonna fuck your ass I'm gonna, up. I'm bro. gonna come by. <laughs> They're going to want to throw you up in the air, though. Yeah, we're going to plan big, it. So. Fine. Listen, we're going to plan it. First time we met Patrick Bet David, it was three years ago. And uh, I think we were speaking at an event, and then he was speaking after us. He came and crossed in the green room. And, dude, my whole team, we threw him, like, fucking 30 yards in the air. Dude, I love that guy. He's yeah. so cool. Yeah. yeah. He, he goes, what, what the fuck is going on? And he was like, who are you guys? And that was the first time we really ever met. And then since then, we moved we all like his brothers. security people out of the way and <laughs> picked Dude, him up. Dude, we show everybody love. First time I, or, well, last year I gave Patrick a really cool watch when we were at his event. And then his right hand guy, Mario, who, uh, who's like been super loyal to him the whole road. Mario. Yeah. I've been working yeah. for him for 21 yeah. years. Yeah, Mario was just out like last weekend or something. And, uh, and I made sure Mario flew with him. And, um, and we bought Mario a really nice watch. Nice. Yeah, and I told Patrick, I'm like, hey, we fucking love you, but like, Come here. I'm like, I want to show Mario for being a great example for loyalty to yeah. a leader. Um, you know, like this is fucking rare. 19 years. 19 years. And so, insane. So we, we gave him a watch and just said, dude, you know, said, thanks for being a fucking, you know. Well, when example. I come out, I want to fucking. No, I don't want to watch. I don't, I don't like none of that stuff. Hey, just <laughs> I don't want none of that stuff. We're gonna don't plan, give me shit. No, we're going to plan it. Just and, have fun. And, and we'll set it up. And when you come out, we're, we're going to make it badass. And uh, we'll do it soon. Yeah, because we'll I, I actually soon. would love to open a gym in Arizona for sure. Well, good. Yeah. We'll do it in the next thirty that to forty-five days. Place, yeah, I know that for sure. Yeah, we'll plan it. We'll pick you up at the well, airport. I appreciate you, man. Yeah, Seriously, you. you're fucking awesome. Appreciate you, man. Thank you for your time. Yeah, you guys, thank and, you and thanks for coming on as well. Too. It means a lot. Yeah, that was awesome. Thank you, guys. Really, man. Yeah. They hate when you elevate. Hey guys, I just want to tell you the true one percenters, you made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.